Ballistics is the top seed from OGN's Super League. They are big favorites going to this tournament. They always have been a strong Korean team since they formed earlier this year. The team has been made for a long time, but all of us have been playing for a long time. This team crushed their group and lost zero maps with their punish heavy style. Ballistics completely manhandled denial in an absolute perfect execution. These are young guys who finally have made it. This is their biggest opportunity to take a BlizzCon. A lot of people are selling Dignitas as the hope for the West. They're the hope that people have been looking towards for defeating Ballistics. Ballistics is actually a very hard matchup for us. Well, we've had a lot of practice in them between like, Korea and now, and we've definitely trained with them a lot. It's easy to say that they are the better team. I don't want an easy semi-final. Ballistics are so strong because of their draft, and if they don't get a stronger draft, then I think they're actually quite weak. Dignitas also, in their match against MVP Black, show that the Korean teams can in fact bleed. And as a result, going into the semifinals, there's a small chance that they could be the ones to take out a Korean team. If the pieces come together in the way we hope we can make them, then I think we can definitely still beat Ballistics. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our second semi-final here of BlizzCon 2016. The number one seed of Europe and the number one seed of Korea are about to take the stage. My name is Solid Jake and I'm joined here with Kaldor and please give a warm welcome to Kalaris and Grubby as they join us today. So guys, we saw an epic, epic series. I'm joined here with three EU panelists. I guess they're kind of taking over all of BlizzCon here for Heroes. What are your thoughts, Kolaris? Unbelievable. I, I was speechless. Actually, no, I wasn't speechless. I was screaming my lungs out in the back, almost to the point where I lost a little bit of my voice, but it's still intact, so I'm okay. It was amazing. I'm not quite there. No, <laughs> close, close. You're getting close, yeah. You were pretty much the opposite of speechless. Everyone yeah. was as we were watching that game in the backstage. I mean, both teams are incredible but the way that Fnatic did it, and against MVP Black, where almost no one gave them a chance to win, was just incredible. And that final showing on the last map on Braxis, that draft was terrifying. Yeah. The way they were able to blow people up with that tactic. It was actually quite interesting because yesterday we already talked a little bit about the strategies that they played also on Braxis, but also that Stitches comp. And I've watched countless scrims of them on Braxis, on Curse with those drafts, and they misplayed yesterday so hard. And every time when you talk to them afterwards, they said like, we had so many problems there, and that was just not us. Today, everything came together, and then you just see how scary these drafts are. I guess that's the benefit of, like, always saying, what do we have to lose? We're against one of the best teams in the world, and they clutched it out. So GG's to them, but we are setting up for the number one seeds of the same regions here. You're proving they're absolutely a monster threat here in Heroes of the Storm. And Bakery, in that interview, said that Dignitas feels that as long as the draft goes their way, they can easily outplay them in the team fights. But he said that the drafts for Ballistics are very strong. And yet when we talked to Ballistics in the pregame interview, they said that they think the drafting is their weaker side and it's their team fights which are strong. One more thing I wanted to point out. Jonghai, in the interview, he said, I don't think there's a country that can compete with Korea. <laughs> well, guess what? Europe is not a country. <laughs> it's a country. <laughs> Oh man, then Thanks again, Grubby. it's Sweden. Yeah, it's Full actually Swedish teams, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just Sweden, they're doing really good. Especially, they're very good at video games in general, a Sweden. There, good job. There's a reason why Sweden is often is called the Korea of Europe. Yeah. Like, <laughs> definitely. Well, but look at the KD ratio here, just comparing that with these two teams. 1.6 there for Team Dignitas versus 1.2 on the side of Ballistics. I think it's fair to say, though, Ballistics plays this game like no other team on the planet right now. They play in such a way where they will group up early, they will be, uh, never leave each other's side and cause massive threats just from tactical ingenuity alone. So they are a very, very big threat. It's a really good point that you bring up here. It's that team fight where they really excel. And this is one of the big differences when you compare to Ballistics to MVP. When we're talking MVP, everybody immediately comes down to how good they are on an individual level. Whereas Ballistics has incredible shot calling when it comes to rotation 
positions and in team fight. And that is why they are a very different beast to face. Yeah, Ballistics will just group up at level, uh, as early as level seven, a level seven versus six and a half, which is like a five second window. They will use that and they will try to take out a few towers early on, getting a lot of damage. They group up more than we even believed is viable or good in Heroes of the Storm. Right. So they are recrafting the way that the game Heroes of the Storm is being played right here at this BlizzCon. Yeah, I mean, they prioritize buildings over lane soak, which is one of the bigger things about all of this. As you're going forwards, when you get a wall, when you get a fort, yeah, that's some chunk of experience. If you can get to those keep walls, that's big experience. They prioritize all of that, keep their opponents on the toes, it's scary. All right, guys, what well, it is time to meet the teams for a second semifinal. Anna, let's get to it in just a bit. All right, guys, just a few moments. We are nearly ready. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the false start there. I know we're all very excited for this next matchup, but we do know that we are going to Dragonshire. That actually makes me a bit afraid for Dignitas. For the reasons I mentioned before, the shot calling and also like the rotation that we see from Ballistics are absolutely excellent. I think that Dignitas has a shot here. They are very confident, especially after how Mena played, like the team was on fire. Even weak points that they had in the team just completely played on a different level, and they have the momentum, I feel. But Dragonshy is a very difficult map to play. You need the best coordination, and Ballistics excels at that. One very important thing when you play at the pro level and, and when you have a match is to believe. And it's very easy to say like, oh yeah, I believe. But like to truly believe in yourself that you can win a game is a different thing. And right here, Fnatic, they won 3-1 against uh, MVP Black. Who's to say that they can't do the same against Ballistics? I feel these numbers uh, for Ballistic don't exactly reflect how high on the pecking order Dragonshire is for them, because oftentimes they're not, it gets banned out against them. It is that strong a map for Ballistics uh, when it comes yeah. to it. So, and Dignitas knows this as well. They fully know that their Ballistics are very strong here. All right, well, I think we are now ready to set the stage. So let's get to it, Anna. Thank you so much. Now, guys, the hype bath is not over. We've just barely gotten our feet wet, and now it's time for our next semi-final match. Please allow me to introduce you to our teams. It's no secret that Korea is dominant when it comes to esports, and they're here to show you why they are the number one seed. Please welcome Ballistics! And now a team that has talked a lot about the investment they have made in their gameplay. And they're here to show us that it will pay off. Please welcome Team Dignitas! Those of us who have been around in esports for a while know that we should expect a Korean win in almost every match for almost every esport, but we just saw that turn on its head. Are we going to see that happen again now? Oh, it is very possible, Anna. I mean, this is a team that has taken the precautions. They traveled to Korea to train and practice for this event from Europe. Then they flew here to America, and I think that's the best practice you can ask for. I still have trouble handling the victory of Fnatic. So uh, looking at this, like if any of the teams of the European teams, I would have said with all the confidence and the practice that Dignitas has the best shot. Now Fnatic is waiting in the grand final. If we make this an EU versus EU final, I, I might not live to see that. Like I'm yeah. losing it. Now Dignitas has had uh, pretty much all the moves that they need to, to prepare for a tournament of this magnitude. A relatively stable roster. They have done the investment to practice in Korea, which could be said to be the fountain of youth, the magical place where if you get your practice in there, then you will be a better player, a better team. And yet, if Dignitas has just sipped from that fountain, yeah. Ballistics lives it every day. <laughs> so it, it, it's a very small effect, one week against the entire practice period that Ballistics has had. So it's going to be a mountainous challenge. Yeah, uh, Dignitas likewise, they know that it is a mountainous challenge. But if Fnatic can do it, so can Dig. Well, let's just get started with the draft and game number one on Dragonshire. Make some noise, because we've already got the band started. I 
honestly believe that right now, also when we're looking at ballistics, they've watched this. And there's a lot just hinging at them right now. They know there's a lot of pressure. There is a lot of fans watching in Korea right now. And they need to make sure that they have at least one Korean team in the final. So they will throw everything against Dignitas. And starting with a map like Dragonshire is definitely going to help them here. I mean, imagine a situation where people like Noble S and SC feel that sting of not being able to get yes. the victory here on a BlizzCon stage once again. We talked in those interviews with them about it. And they said they, we just like heard how important it actually is for them to really just became First, they said second place is not an option. It's all about winning the tournament. Do you ever underestimate anyone? We asked Ballistics and they said, we cannot afford to. Last year, Cloud9 out of nowhere, Cloud9, Cloud9 <laughs> out of nowhere came and they won the tournament. I have a problem with the D letter. So <laughs> they came out of nowhere and they won the tournament. So they cannot afford to make that mistake again and not have a Korean winning that one. All right, Team Ding Task going down the Muradin path here. With Tychus to start things off, they're kind of anticipating a bit more of a heavier front line, finding some comfort with that, and picking up Chen anyway. So their front line is very solid right now. Yeah, I like the Chen pick here quite a bit for the top lane. It's absolutely fantastic. They've been doing great with Chen so far. But Ballistics has forced that. And when we're talking about Dragon Shire, we're talking a lot about the potential globals. You've seen the Haka being picked on this map. Falstead, right wing, they all can make massive plays around the Shrine Control. Next. All right, you can feel the tension in this draft, though, already looking to grab many of these big global heroes on Dragonshire for those quick rotations. Yes, Chen is a strong solo laner. Who are we expecting to see to respond to that? It's very difficult to know. Ballistics has had a very easy tournament so far. They've won everything. And they said in their pregame interview that they have been hiding themselves in all the easier matchups, which was pretty much everyone uh, else. This is interesting. A Regar ban. This makes me feel that Ballistics might even pick up two main supports here and try and choke them out. I know it sounds weird, but a Regar ban to come in as they go to the next two picks. It's definitely not quite what you would expect you're going into this. Oil. So we have Brightwing already taken, and that gives us another global. So again, with ETC going into potential stage dive, we would have three globals there. Oh, they are, they are wow. going full global with this. Yeah, this is potentially okay. four out of four globals so far. Yeah. If they go with the stage dive, the final one actually would be Abathur, and then you can just be anywhere, anytime you want. It this, would be insane. This scares the hell out of me right now. So strong. We've seen how powerful this power of these globals are in our just previous series. Yeah. How strong it can be, and that in the hands of ballistics. When they are known for their rotationary prowess, that's scary. But Dignitas must have known that this could happen. You don't draft double warrior and then get surprised that someone takes the Haka because you already accept not taking the Haka when you go for double warrior that early. Now, because of the Ragar ban and because of how they picked, they know, or oh, Ballistics must know that Oriel was coming and they probably feel comfortable here forcing their opponents into that position. So it's quite interesting to see how this is developing. Now, Oriel has no cleanse. There's lots of lockdown there. The drag down by Darka, yeah. Polymorph, Power Slide. Dignitas needs to come up with an answer here to this massive blow up potential by Ballistics. We already said that Ballistics groups up a lot more than a lot of other teams, oh. and yet Dignitas is not drafting cleanse or a secondary support. I'm this is a very big gamble. They can't. They're the only hero that they were really lacking is the hero for Mena. So basically, it's a toss up at this point between Gul'dan and Aoli Ming, unless you want to force him out of his comfort zone. He is probably the player that practices the most in Europe, and he has a huge hero pool, but these are his comfort picks. Yeah. So they go for Gul'dan done here, and you're totally right, Grubby. This is really scary oh, right now. Sergeant Hammer comes in as the last pick. It shows the Ballistics know their opponents very yeah. well with how they've orchestrated this draft. And when you have the, the potential to siege up on your opponents with Sergeant Hammer, in this massive global threat across the board, the amount of opportunities they have to just get free siege is dramatic. I think Ballistics has a very strong early game. Chen can start to counter Sergeant Hammer when he gets to level 10. But before that, Hammer and Brightwing are a very powerful combination. It's very easy for them to keep away the Warriors and to prevent Dignitas from closing in on them. I think we see an incredibly powerful four-man rotation here by Ballistics in the bottom lane. I feel like this is only the second hammer we've seen all tournament. We saw one from Burn one, Rage. Yes, one in opening recall. week. So this is, or maybe even the third, I should say. I'm not quite sure. But yeah. regardless, it hasn't been common. And if you can make it work here with a roster like Ballistics, they have so much pushing power behind that and the control of uh, the global. That is uh, a powerful tool. 
For me personally, the story of the tournament is also the rise of the global heroes. The Haka, Brightwing, the false that plays we've seen, Stage Dive 2. So looking at this draft, <laughs> are we all James Baker? We're all James Baker. <laughs> this draft is something that really scares me, and I feel Dignitas is going to struggle a lot with the setup they have, especially on Dragonshire. De like, I mean, around all of these shrines, you can go in with a false set that the Haka turned into two versus one. I'm very scared looking at the draft for this first game when it comes to Dignitas. They do have some power when it comes to level 10, though. The control they have. If you're if you're sitting in a drill when Horrify have act, is active, and yes, we we're talking about the lack of cleanse, Crystal Aegis is a very strong utility, very similar to a cleanse. Basically an ice block that forces them to move off. There's a lot of big plays Bakery can make. Now, the strongest interaction here for Team Dignitas is the fact that they have Gul'dan and Ariel together. In that four-man rotation, Gul'dan gives so much energy to Ariel. The more damage Gul'dan does, the more healing power Ariel gets. That combination is a classic uh, that we see at the ladder, that we see at pro play, and it's just going to do a lot for Dignitas. They really just fuel each other, the way those two heroes work, actually, having the opposite characteristics. But yes, you can see the crowd is getting excited. We are nearing our first game in this series. Kolaris, who do you think got the better end here? Oh, you're asking me that in a Dignitas series? Ah, oh, uh, I think the Ballistics draft is really good, and for this first game, I will go with them. Galdor? I have to agree. For the reasons mentioned with the Globals, I think as much as I cheer for Dignitas here, want the European versus European final, this is a Ballistics all over. Ravi. I think it's Miracle Day. I think Fnatic won against MVP Black. And on Miracle Days, they always come in twos. I do think that Dignitas has a really good shot at doing well in the series, but I don't think they got this draft. I'm going to go with Ballistics. Well, we want to know who you guys want to win, so make some noise as we hop in to Dragonshire for game number one. All right, game one of the semi-final. It has been done by one European team so far. Can it happen again, or will Ballistics, arguably the strongest team in the world right now, reign supreme, Grubby? Yeah, here on the left side in the blue, we've got Jong Ha on the Haka, Nacho Chin on Falstad, Noble S on ETC, it's SESE on Hammer, Swoy on Breitwing, it's Ballistics! And then to the right hand side, Athero gonna be playing Chen, Bakery on Ariel, JPL gonna be playing Muradin, Many on Gul'dan, Snitch on Tychus, give it up for Team Dignitas! Dignitas immediately spreading out, not going for that five-man fight in the middle. It's a wise move. We already said Ariel does not have cleanse in general, and they're at level one. There's no Crystal Aegis. There is no way to prevent someone from getting blown up by Ballistics. So Dignitas spreads out, takes their position on the chessboard here, and has spread out to get some XP in every lane. Yeah, our Korean team playing true to their name potentially here, if they're able to get the lockdown on someone. Uh, really depends on how Dignitas is going to approach it. They need to play it patiently. One thing is for sure. They're trying to establish themselves on this bottom lane. Chen versus the hacker can kind of normalize out. Athero, though, very experienced, even in that matchup. Uh, you know, we've seen Quite a bit to hacker throughout this tournament. There has been practice gone into it. I think one thing that should be remembered in Chen versus Dahaka is that Chen cannot win that lane. Dahaka has too much regeneration. He can hardstone back and just enter again in that lane with full life. And he has to constantly worry about ganks by Falstaff, by Brightwing, and so on. That being said, there, Ding Tas going quite heavy in. Swoy's going to come around for this. Nacho Jin helps out as well with the fly on forwards. Going for the polymorph on towards Athero. He will be able to get out of here. There was many just waiting in the wings to see if he needed any help, but he did not. It's a good option to take, and Dignitas, I think, is playing it smart here, sending several members to the top. Chen can never be alone and win that lane, so we need to see these rotations all the time by Dignitas. By pretending to do a gank, or by doing a gank, you force Ballistics to use their globals, yeah. and then they lose that mobility for a period of time. Also, the Ariel Tychus composition in general, not too bad at all. It will actually generate a lot of energy there for Ariel on the... Uh, for a bakery, even I should say, as Noblesse just waiting and actually looking for the lockdown already. That's a double stun. Don't think they can get the kill, but just a bit of chip damage here. Good amount of damage there on Noblesse ETC, who was checking out to see how Dignitas is rotating. And Dignitas, they're staying in the very same boost that they already revealed themselves in. Trying to catch someone who might be rotating too aggressively. Noblesse, oh, avoiding that storm bolt there. JPL clipping the edge of that minion. 
as they're trying to wrestle away uh, the control of this bottom shrine. See what can happen. Noblesse and SCSC now move on towards it. JPL looking for a small bit of damage on towards Noblesse, but nothing too impactful yet. There's a there's a collection talent here for Tychus, for Snitch. He has chosen to go within the rhythm. It's a quest. The more he uses his minigun, which removes a percentage of the target's HP, the longer it will remain active in the future, permanently, a permanent buff. Snitch is gonna try and stack that up to do massive amounts of damage on warriors. Jung Ha in quite a bit of trouble there. We'll use Dark Swarm to just move straight through Athero as Nacho Jin once again looking to provide support. Down towards the bottom, Dignitas have done well. They knew their limitations about how long they could stay on that shrine, and with Ariel on their side and Tychus gathering that uh, hope for her, it was a long time. No team gaining the upper hand yet. Each one looking for an angle. Is this it? Noblesse taking a bunch of damage. Uh, he's going to be safe for now. It's the calm before the storm. You cannot <laughs> take the Dragon Knight. Well, mostly. I saw one yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you kill one of the opponent's heroes. And both teams are playing too safe. No rookie mistakes here. Yeah, I'm looking uh, for Dick to try and lure Nacho Jun out of position there. But it is not to occur. SCSC does have to be careful if he doesn't have much support with him. But at the moment, he is fine. Looking for an attack on Tychus. That was not an intended pun there almost. But as for now, Noblesse will just clear him down that wave. That run and gun timing by Tychus was quite fortuitous. Uh, the face melt barely missed it. That could have been the first takedown of the game, but Snitch timed it out really well. And it's these little things on the match day yep. that sometimes makes the difference. Yeah, uh, and also uh, you've got to imagine that Dignitas are fueled with a little bit more spring in their step after watching our previous results, saying exactly. if Fnatic is able to defeat MVP Black, and in the past Dignitas have done pretty well against Fnatic, they've got to you know have a little bit more going for them. It's very important to believe in yourself, in every fiber of your being. Dignitas have the laser channel. When you channel both the top and the bottom shrine, you'll get those double laser channel. You can get the Dragonite capture in the middle, but you must get, keep control of the shrines and be able to remove the enemy from the middle so that you can actually get that Dragonite. That yes. objective is very powerful. Uh, no team is able to get it yet. Moving off on them. And you see SCFC. Oh, no, oh, that's a big drag on towards Snitch there. He's probably going to go down. That's going to be first blood going over to Ballistics. Nice little chain of events there uh, with that drag on back. And uh, good kill there for Ballistics. And that's what we're talking about here. We have all these global teleportation spells by Ballistics. That was a five man grouping at minute five at level seven versus seven or eight versus eight. The, the, like, this is the kind of thing that Ballistics does, which really throws off their opponents. Yeah, nice pop off there against JPL, who was trying to jump away. Not unstoppable. Athero in a lot of trouble here. He might end up going down. Many's trying to help on out, but I don't think it's going to be enough. That's another kill going over to Ballistics here. Many might be in trouble himself. Many? He's not careful. Will he go down? Oh, 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 no, he will not. Barely escapes. Men is squeezing the last bit of toothpaste out of the tube right. there, knowing <laughs> that he can survive with one HP. Nearly got Falstaff, but the barrel rolls shield to generation saved Falstaff, and Nacho Chin gets away. On to Snitch again there, and a Stormbolt misses against the ETC uh, from JPL. So, not the, quite the save he wanted, but it's enough to actually get Snitch out of that position. And now, it looks like Ballistic's going to be rivaling for that Dragon Knight. Now, uh, Falstaff is in position. Nacho Jin is getting the Dragon Knight, and oh. he takes it. First Dragon Knight to Ballistics. Good victory there by them, indeed. And now, now they're really taking control of this map. They, with this first Dragon Knight, they want to just get like a few towers here or there. If they could get anything more than that, they would be extremely happy. But they know the value of first Dragon Knight. And Sergeant Hammer, in the meantime, starting to push the bottom as well. They can shoot with impunity here. They've got the level 10 heroic ability. The Dragonite has forced an overreaction in the middle. In the meantime, it's Sergeant Hammers doing the massive amounts of damage here. Oh, and that, that detainment strike knocked him out of range of that fort. So that's a very good move there by Bakery to make sure that they can't continue that on just yet, especially now with the Dragonite down in mid. Uh, heroics have been chosen for Ballistics here. They've gone for isolation on the Haka. Blink heal, Napalm strike, Mighty Gust, and Mosh Pit. Just gonna start pushing up a little bit up towards the top here. As Ballistics will back off at the moment. Not really too much rush to do anything here. Uh, not, you know, the funny thing is, is that we said at the beginning of the game, Ballistics normally what they do is they group up, they go around as a team, and then they're able to just do what they want. But they can all just reinforce anywhere on the map anyway. The, yeah, <laughs> they'll do it if there's an opportune time. Yeah, yeah. But it also has to be said that Dragonshire isn't really that kind of battleground, right. nor do they really have that kind of composition where they need to group up and stay together for a long time.
We might see that coming on the Infernal Shrines or Cursed Hollow, but so far Ballistics is just playing it very cleanly. Yep. They take small little leads, they haven't made any mistakes, they take a takedown here and there, and they had an option to take a few others. And they've netted themselves a nice lead. Now Ethereal trying to get away, activated Elusive Brawler already. Oh, you can see his movement there, trying to dodge as much as possible. He will end up going down. But all of that movement was to try and avoid isolation, avoid a drag. Unfortunately for him, not enough. And Ballistics take another kill. I'm really curious to see how these two teams will match up in a team fight scenario. If there ever will be any. Yeah, Kalaris, so far, uh, Ballistics is very happy to make every engagement a five versus one. Five versus two, they're really using their composition to the fullest and they started to capture Murkamps all around the map. The map has been painted mostly blue. We have a Murkamp push at the top, at the bottom, and here the grouping at the bottom for Ballistics. Now there's a big ah. flank here set up by JPL, but there's a talent lead for Ballistics. Does Dignitas dare to do this fight? We have Meta rotating down. Gul'dan is coming in. He, his ETA is five seconds. Dignitas wants to do uh -huh. a five versus four here. They realize he's there. Gonna go for the Storm, but on towards the Sergeant Hammer. Here comes uh, Chen as well. Trying to find on towards SCSC. Don't know if they're actually gonna be able to get too much from that. Now looking for the focus fight on towards Noblesse. He will power slide out. Nacho Jin towards the top. Gets jumped on by the Pandas, but everything settles down. Yeah, nice try there with uh, the sidestep by Nacho Chin on Falstad. He missed his power throw on Gul'dan, which removed the option to be able to get a takedown there. Dignitas's ploy here failed, and that also means that they will be giving away the Dragonite. Now, Kalaris, that was of course the expected result mm -hmm. with the way that the game was going. They took an option of getting a takedown, but the Dragonite will be going to Ballistics. Looking for more power here. If they can take out the entire outer rim of force, that would put them in a great position, especially experience-wise, as JPL starts to work on the Dragonite. See Noblesse here looking for uh, any kind of potential flank on maybe an out of position target. That is Muradin there being isolated, taking down oh, quite low, a dragon as well as the polymorph. Horrify is going on towards Noblesse there to try and pull him out of position. JPL might be out. It's a kind of scary. I don't think he's going to get away. It tries to go for the Crystal Aegis here. He's going to end up going down. Ballistics will take a first kill. Bakery decided not to heal Muradin. Knew he's going to be in a very tough spot there and saved it for himself or didn't have the cooldown. He is now finding himself in a very over extended position as he was trying to get away from the Haka. How the Dragonite is going to try and cut him off. How is Baker still alive during all of that? <laughs> but he manages to get out. He almost full health as well. Some good evasive tactics coming out from Bakery, but they lose the fort. They lose that kill. Ballistics is in full control. Yeah, Ballistics is playing this one like clockwork. Every two minutes they get a takedown. They're grinding out a victory here over Team Dignitas, who so far have yet to come up with an answer against Ballistic's methodical playstyle. Yeah, it's just been clean, absolutely clean here from our Korean team in Ballistics, showing why they are Super League champions at the moment. Noblesse though taking some damage, going a little bit too far forward. Swoy will come in for the reinforcement with that face shift. Here oh. comes Nacho Jin, looking to isolate, looking to kill off JPL, trying to focus fire. Ghost comes out towards Snitch, Crystal Aegis trying to save someone there. As Bakery ends up falling, so does Tychus, and oh my god, two kills already going that way. Yeah, Bakery didn't have a cooldown to heal himself yet. He was about one second away, despite having a lot of energy there. Nice blow up by Ballistics and all throughout that as Dignitas was going for Noblesse, going for the ETC, we had SCSC Sergeant Hammer blasting away from the other side of the wall. A constricting play style here from Ballistics who are just constantly now pushing on the pressure with this um, giant camp as well towards the bottom. They're going to be able to maybe even get a keep if they were actually very keen about it. But the, to the left hand side, Chen coming around here. Athero looking for potential flanks. Uh, Sergeant Hammer picking stone skin here, prioritizing safety. We see Storm uh, Earth and Fire going for Nitrogen here in the back. Horrify landed as well, and then Noblesse goes quite far forward. Slides out there, but they're still on towards Noblesse. Will they be able to save him? He doesn't have that much healing. Blink heal on towards him, though. He might be able to get away. That's so much damage. Cooldown's pushing out, but the gust to disengage. Ballistic play it perfectly. Yeah, nice job there by Ballistics, making the getaway complete. 60% damage on the keep, but Mene on the cooldown, it really is starting to pile on a lot of damage here on the team of Ballistics. So far, I, I haven't seen any hope for Dignitas, mm. but that amount of damage, that is pretty impressive. And I think Gul'dan at level 16 with Ruinous Affliction on Gul'dan gets a huge amount of burst damage and might be able to have an answer. Yeah. I think the longer the fights go on, the more it benefits Dignitas, right? With someone like Gul'dan being able to put out that much pressure with that kind of damage, but can they allow it to, like, can, can they get that position where they actually push it to a long fight is the question. Yeah, exactly. Don't forget about In the Rhythm Eater and that's the stuff for Taika. 
Gladius, lots of healing on himself, lots of damage. Dignitas can do pretty okay in a long game, but they have to have somehow an equal position here. And so far, they are very far behind, two and a half levels. The way that Ballistics does this is just magical. They have, all their games look like this. And not easy to challenge that Dragonite at all, as you're mentioning. And now that could mean easily the keep. If they wanted, if they found a position here with this giant camp as well, that could be game. Dignitas here now needs to rally up a good position, try and push this away. That keep is very close to falling. If they save the Dragonite and are able to push it onto core, that could be it. Yeah, the keep goes down. Dragonite is very healthy, still 85% life. But what Ballistics does must be right. Uh, if they're going back, then yeah, I believe in yeah. them. It was the right move to go back. If they attack, I would believe in them. <laughs> I, I will not dare to doubt the number one seed team here. Maybe they could have ended, but they're playing it very safely. Very cleanly. Again, you know, we can't emphasize that enough, really. As well, going on towards Chen. Oh! That's going to be a pickoff very quickly going down there as Chen does get annihilated. And now Jung Ha is coming in with the rest of the team. They just wanted that one pickoff. Yeah. And they lured them into a full sense of security down towards his bottom lane. This could be it. Exactly. They just pretend to go for the middle. They get a forward or whatever. But what they really wanted was to pull oh. Dignitas out of position. They succeeded. They got down Chen. They're going for the core. Very, very strong here as Jung Ha just focused is on down. The drill's trying to kill off the Dragonite, but it's not going to be enough. Ballistics comes out with a blinder of a game to start the series and makes it look easy against Dignitas. Great first game of the series here by Team Ballistics. A very clean 1-0. A very different statement here than what we saw coming out of either Fnatic or MVP Black in the previous semifinals, where every game was a nail-biter. Yeah. Ballistics, they got their one kill every two minutes. They got their 13-minute game, and they got their 1-0 in this best of five. Difficult to go up against precision like that here, as you could even see in Sergeant Hammer. You know, they don't they don't do the normal hammer things, which is, I'm just going to siege up and do a bit of siege damage. No, they only ever siege up when they know that hammer is going to be hard to reach, hard to deal with, and from that point on, even just taking a fight alone is uh, very difficult, let alone saving your buildings. Everything about their play was patience, calculations, just waiting and finding an opportunity, and they took each and every one of those opportunities with Ease. It did not look hard. Not a single moment of that looked like there was a struggle for Ballistics. Don't you feel like when you watch this game and you see Ballistics play, you're like, yeah, that looks pretty easy. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> but, but, but you can't. It's like there's a lot to it, isn't it? Like the dominance that we saw in the coordination, it basically comes down a feel to what we talked about before the game started. They are just on a completely different level when it comes to that. And I mean, it looked, they made it look easy. I mean, that's why they're the number one team from Korea, the number one seed there. Now, Kaldor, we had some big plays in that game. Let's look at one. Yeah, that was actually, it was a pretty straightforward game. So I picked one team right here first. And I mean, you can already tell we have them jumping in immediately. At this point, it's already a problem for Dignitas as they're moving back. It's still on the same talents that we're seeing here. But we all already have at this point the Haka jumping into the bush here, immediately starting to attack, using, of course, the isolation. At the same time, we're having Muradin in trouble. And it's just full retreat on on the side of Dignitas. They really had a rough time here. The Dragonite is at this point still active and up at the top. And yeah, right now they're just like rolling forward. They drag him back. Immediately the Mighty Gust coming in, isolating them. The Aegis is being thrown out, trying to save them. But yeah, that's the first kill, the second kill. JPL and Mena on the way back. But this is just like symptomatic for what happened throughout the entire game. I mean, the beauty is in their draft, though. I think having that Sergeant Hammer for that siege with all the global for a map like Dragonshire, a map that we don't see all that much here, especially in the Western teams, it seemed just perfection on the side of Ballistics. The funny thing is, is that uh, for a long time, and harking uh, like six months back, you would see that teams like MVP Black almost always banning out Falstad or trying to get it very early in a draft. We haven't really seen too many Korean teams being able to get Falstad. Look at our previous series. Always Fnatic was trying to grab that as much as possible. Ballistics here, they got it very quickly, and they were able to control. Any time they were getting in trouble, gust away, just leave. They did not want any of the team fights if it was not going absolutely their way. So it was such strong control. Well, their teams are ready to jump right out into Battlefield of Eternity because they have already begun the draft. So let's take a look to see where we're at. Warriors, Burden, and ETC have both been banned. Okay, so we're gonna maybe see like a Johanna coming out uh, as the usual next warrior here. That's really the two usual suspects here. And also some of the most play the two most played heroes of the tournament, ETC and Muradin. 
Actually, I think this is a pretty cool start in the draft just for the fact that we are going to see very different compositions here compared to what we had so far. EDC and Meridian are the two CC tanks and every time we had teams going down on them very early in the draft. Ballistic starts over the Malfurion, which is a fantastic start for Battlefield. And there's so many synergy heroes that they can pick up later during the draft. Now, obviously, when it comes to the maps as a whole, D Dragonshire is a map for Ballistics that is very, very strong. This is Dignitas's pick, and they know that Ballistics doesn't play this map that much and doesn't have that great win record there. Admittedly, they go up against MVP Black, which are really good on this map, but still, it's not exactly their compass. I mean, is this the first time we've seen Battlefield of Eternity at BlizzCon in the stage of this event? Well, we've seen Mena blow up several people with Li Ming yesterday okay. uh, on this very that's battleground. Right, right. He played an amazing game there where they, they, they were four versus five, and Mena just went from behind and blew everything up. Insane plays here. He played out of his mind yesterday, and they yep. have Li Ming again. And to be quite frank, if they want to take down Ballistic, he has to show plays on the same level once more. Yeah, yeah. I think Mena is a very consistent player. I just met him backstage, he was talking to someone, and I just heard these very symbolic words here from him. I just want to go and play. He's like, he wasn't <laughs> excited about the previous result or bored by the weight. He just he just wanted to go and play. And that's the kind of guy he is. Very hardworking, very mechanical, and very consistent. He's hands down the player in Europe that plays the most. Yeah, like, yeah. No, nobody else is even close to the amount of games that he throws out. You're right, every single morning. He was at the practice area, but he'd be yep. open week all BlizzCon. He was here before almost everybody else, so definitely that's true. And that is Johanna coming in for Ballistics, which, you know, after the initial choke of Warriors, on either side. It feels like they wanted to get Noble S is kind of usually limited to two warriors, Johanna being one of them, so I think he's very happy he's got Johanna. They also have the Vala now, so the Vala Malfurion combo once again, the cooler reduction, the mana there, so this is actually like a pick that we oftentimes seen early on, Malfurion, Vala right away, so they have already a very good start into this draft. I like what we're seeing for Ballistic. And let's also point out that Ballistics is not going to be surprised by anything that happened so far. They've planned this draft. When you ban ETC in first ban location, the second one is almost guaranteed to ban Muradin because those two are so good. You can't give away one when you don't have the other. So they were preparing to get the Johanna, to get the Vala and, and Malfurion. I also really feel this catered towards them. We've been talking a lot about comfort picks for Dignitas, and especially when we're talking about someone like Jay. He has played fantastic games on Muradin here. So with the CC tanks being uh, completely denied, this is going to be an interesting one. We could, I feel, see maybe a Tyrael composition coming out of Dignitas. I mean, the biggest win rates of the tournament here in order are Greymane, then Tyrael, then Gul'dan, then Falstad, and Malph. And Tyrael would have been... <laughs> so much for that, Excellent, right? yes. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I mean, you could see that coming out of Dignitas here. Tyrael, Greymane, would be great. Yeah. You get the damage on the, yeah. but no, no can do. But now Dignitas wow. are in a situation where the warrior pool is quite limited and they have actually locked in Thrall. Now in the past, not, not Dignitas so much, we have seen teams try to forego the warrior on this battleground just to race for that immortal and then push with Sylvanas. Seems like a risky play, but they might try to do a similar version with a bruiser in the front line. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. I do think we'll see a warrior in final location. I don't know exactly which one, but it's just like, it's super paper fragile. Mm. Yeah. That was unexpected. I'll be honest. That, but I mean, I mean, when you end up in this draft situation, what do you do? There's four, three tanks been banned out. Johanna's taken on the other side. Dahaka so, doesn't excel here. Not as a solo, no, definitely not. But I think like, I mean, we've had if it was another team, I would have actually said that they can like throw out the stitches here on Battlefield of Eternity if they really feel the pressure right. at this point. But they don't really have too much lockdown actually, after I, that. I guess a Brightwing could work if you get the Wolf in from... I uh, think you may have actually nailed, the, nailed it on its Ooh. head because I think there aren't that many good warriors left here. Yeah. We have some vulnerable targets for Ballistics. Alarak comes out. He's one of the prime defenders of the, uh, of the Immortal. Very and excited to see that coming out here. I mean, something in favor of the stitches... Uh, James, you can say more about that, is Jay on the, would be on the hero. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. One of the best uh, in Europe, if not the world, really, uh, to actually kind of go for that. But Ballistics with the Alarak pick, that's... Uh, we, we've seen how scary it was in Rich's hands, uh, unfortunately now not in the tournament, I suppose, but inside, inside of Ballistics, it could equal a very, very strong synergy once again with Malfurion that we have seen and also Condemn with Johanna also causes problems for people. I think the obvious fit for Ballistics is Falstad. We saw this mm. coming out yesterday from, uh, was it? Oh. Oh. oh, wow, okay. That's the first pickup of Lunara we've seen, right? Is yeah. it the first in the whole tournament, isn't it? There was a ban, but that's the first pick. Now you got to think about Nature's Calling. Level Stitches. 7 was not Stitches. becomes a boss. There we go. All right.
What else could it be, really? Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, you have a few other options of what you could play, but if you are talking about like a solo tank, I mean, we have seen approaches in the past of like getting aggressive compositions with like a Diablo and a Nubarak, but they have fallen off the meta quite yeah. a bit. So if you have a solo tank and with all the bans and picks that we had so far, I guess Stitches is a very good choice for them. So actually, Nature's Culling on Lunara has the lowest win rate on this battleground, strangely enough. Uh, it actually comes down to team fights a lot uh, when it comes uh, to this uh, battleground. Yeah, we have Hooks versus Telekinesis and Discord Strike here. Alarak versus Stitches. Who can get a pick off and make that a 5 versus 4 and then propel themselves into a very good Immortal trading pace? I mean, if they do get a hook, the blow potential is very real on mm. the side of Team Dignitas. They they won't be able to fully, I think it's the wolf that comes out to try and lock someone down once you get that hook and then blow up from there, uh, which could work, could have success, but if you get a Johanna, it's not really going to work out too well. I mean, talking about Scissors just for a moment, every single time we've seen teams like Fnatic play, the idea behind it was to just not only get the hook, but you actually try to isolate immediately mm -hmm. with, a, with, let's say, a Mighty Gust. Do you think that Brightwing is going to go into Emerald Wind here and tries to just like make sure that opponents that go in are pushed away, or do they think they're completely playing at seven. I think he's gonna probably play Blink Heal. Emerald Wind is pretty good against, well, actually almost against no one here. It's like he can use it after he gets pulled in, but I think mostly we have a backline uh, team here for Ballistics. I think he needs it to yeah. save himself and to save his allies. What's really interesting to me is typically when you see Thrall, you're thinking of the Sundering Engage for that hero, and then the follow-up is oftentimes Johanna with the Blessed Shield or a tank that can really go in and capitalize on that stun. Yes, you can use that hook and then separate the rest of the team with Sundering, but it'll be really interesting to see how this works with Stitches and Thrall paired together. I don't want to say Earthquake is likely, but it is something that is on the table. Admittedly, if Thrall can get flanks with Sundering, then Lunara and Valor are extremely exposed. And Malfurion to help out that kind of flank that could be very powerful is difficult for Malfurion to deal with. But then you're very deep in the back line. You need your entire team to follow you. And if you end up going up against Twilight Dream, you're a dead thrall. That's not a good position. Yeah, yeah I think it's going to mostly be used defensively or Sundering. If someone gets pulled in by Discord Strike, yeah. by, uh, by Alarak, I think it's just going to try and stop that blow up potential from the back line of Ballistics. I think this is a scary thing when you think about when Thrall does want to go in and apply that pressure to the Immortal, which is what Thrall excels at, right? You pop Wind Fury, you do huge damage. All I can sweep you into one of those stuns laid down by the boss, and it could get real messy really fast. So we're going to have to see our Thrall player, Athero, play very carefully here. I mean, Dignitas has a lot of pressure against the Immortal. They have the Sylvanas, yep. they have Li Ming, they have the Pogue there. If Thrall gets into the position, so they can really play the objective here. Of course, Ballistics has quite a few tools themselves, but I feel that Dignitas has actually set them up in a situation where they can rely on hooks if there's a standoff game, and at the same time, they can put a lot of pressure onto the Immortal. Yeah, the race will be very interesting. Yeah. Well, we've got Ballistics, the number one seed here from Korea, up 1-0. Let's get a closer look at that team. Kios game is a team game. It's a lot of work. 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 MVP Miracle and Black Bell can win the MVP. 저희 팀의 강점은 어, 다른 팀보다 서로에게 부담감을 안 주고 좀더 플레이하는 것도 있고 약간 우승에 대한 부담감이 MVP 쪽이 많이 심하고 저희가 부담 없이 경기에 임했던 게 Ballistics ended up winning the most recent Super League which means they are the favorite moving into BlizzCon 2016 프로게임을 하면 학업을 좀 표기하는 면이 다 있는 것 같고 그냥 자고 게임하고 일어나서 계속 그렇게 해야만 하니까 여자친구 사귈 시간이 없진 않은데 중국이랑 유럽 쪽이 좀셀것 같아요. 디그니 타스가 좀 한국에 전지 훈련을 왔어요 이번에. 그래서 연습을 좀 해봤는데 잘하더라고요. 그래서 어, 한국하고 딱히 막 경쟁이 될 만한 나라는 없는 것 같아요. 근데 팀그 발리스틱스 게이밍 팀원들을 만나고 결국에는 원하던 블리스컨 무대를 밟게 되었고 다섯 명다 약간 꿈과 같았던 일이라 기뻤던 것 같아요. A dream come true. Ballistics here with their 1-0 lead right now. But Dignitas want to take it back in this matchup. Now, we've been talking a bit about this draft. We look at these picks. Dignitas seems to be going off and doing something out of the ordinary. How much of their draft is forced by Ballistics doing this big warrior lock? 
I'd say a fair amount. They got the comfort pick for Mene, Li Ming, but I think everything afterwards is very much a reaction to the drafting strategy here of Ballistics. Once you ban that one ETC, it just changes the whole draft into, uh, okay, what kind of warriors are we going to use? They weren't like, oh, let's go Stitches. It's one of their bag of trick strategies, but I don't think Dignitas wanted to necessarily get there. I can actually see that Ballistics didn't really think about Stitches as one of the best heroes for JPL. We've been talking about research quite a bit, and that hero hasn't been played in the past as like a lot since then. So, of course, he's fantastic on him, but I really feel that what you just said is completely true. Not only banning out those tanks, but also getting rid of Tyrael here. Mm. That is really important. I think Ballistics, they've done the homework. For me, like, as much as you know, there was all the tank lock, etc., the, the Thrall is the one that really stands out to me as something that they they have practice with. It's not, there's no doubt about that, but it is in reaction to all of this going on. And there is a lot of onus on him, to, uh, on Athero, I should say, to actually find himself good positions here with Thrall, because you have to walk such a fine line between madness and brilliance if you're going to make Thrall work here. Well, Dig Dignitas, they have been training in Korea, so let's take a closer look at their team and see what they think. Team Dignitas has proven time and time again that they can take the crown in Europe if they want to. They have aspirations to prove themselves to be not just their region's best, but to be the world best. P4 in the top eight in the world is actually really big. This time we boot camp in Korea to play against the best because we want to be the best. It was very uh, helpful for us to do experience playing one of the best teams in the world. It's obviously prepared us a lot more and made our method more stable. Now that Ethereum Angel is back on the team and we've had a bit of time to gel, it's actually really different from last year. We had to relearn the game, relearn shot calling, relearn drafting, how we exactly want to do it. We were all very focused on improving as quickly as we could. We all had a very uh, good mindset. We've been preparing really hard for BlizzCon to make sure we're in the top form. Everyone is improving super fast right now. I think we can beat uh, almost everyone. I think mostly now it's just about focusing on preparing ourselves for specific matchups. I don't want to prove that EU is better or NA is better, but, <laughs> well, I think we are better. Uh... <laughs> it's incredible having so many international fans who are willing to support us from all around the world. is helping our drive to perform to be the best, and hopefully we won't let you down. This is a really big thing for them. There's high hopes on them to represent Europe and to represent the Western regions as one of the strongest teams. Let's see if they can do it. Such nice words, Grubby. I think they have done it, making it here to the top four, Dignitas. Looking to make Europe proud, just like Fnatic already has. The one point that I want to quickly raise, because Kaleris was just talking about it, that Thrall pick, the one thing that gives me hope, like seeing that, is how quickly they locked it in. Mm. They expected Tyrael to be banned, and they were standing there, and it was an insta-lock. So they must have had that in the back of their head, saying, okay, if they ban Tyrael, we go through all. So that shows confidence, and I hope that this is something that they can, that they can lead into a victory here for them. Now, I've seen Ballistics play with a very similar draft here where they have Johanna, and they just rotate together, and they look virtually unkillable. And I think they've made a very scary statement in the last game where they were actually unkillable. They didn't lose anybody. They've played this very safe. Now, we can say that with Sylvanas on the side for Team Dignitas, if Dignitas gets a lead, they can snowball that. We've said it before. Her trade can shut down enemy buildings, which means that the objective push, the Immortal, will be very powerful. But can they get ahead? Can they get that first Immortal even, right? It's going right. to be very difficult. Yes, if we do, in fact, see Nature's Calling pick to level 7, that's going to give Ballistics a really nice mid-game power spike. But before that, they don't necessarily have that. Lunara does have nice damage overall. But I feel if Thrall can get there, if Li Ming can get her poke on, they can confirm that first Punisher. And with that, the pressure of Sylvanas very well could net themselves a 1-2 to two level lead. But if they don't do that, I think they're in a pretty tough spot. And Alarak and Johanna are very weak on the Immortal. They don't do a lot of mm. PvE damage against the environment, against the Immortals. Whereas on Dignitas, we have a team that is pretty strong. They have four strong members in DPS against the Immortal. So if they just go their own way, and Dignitas does the trade, and so does Ballistics, Dignitas should be able to take it. But Alarak doesn't play by the rules. He likes to go and defend their own Immortal, not trade, and pull people in into that Immortal stun. And that could be really deadly if well executed. And I'm wondering if there's a world where if the Dignitas does sync themselves up well enough against Alarak, one thing that Alarak has going for him usually is the fact that he can use counterattack. And then basically it's like a, a little bit of an ice block, he's okay for a while. But if the Wailing Arrow is able to catch him and they get the blow potential onto Alarak, the plan for Ballistics could fall through. It could yeah. go uh, completely against them here if he falls. 
This is for me personally, I mean, Dignitas has picked the map. This is the map they have to win. If you lose here now, you are behind 0-2, and, and coming back from that is going to be incredibly hard. I personally have high hopes for them there. This is the map that they have to win. They have Jay on the stitches. They can wait for that hook. They have also Mena as a playmaker on one of his favorite heroes. I feel like if they win a map, it's this one. Even though there's a lot of danger coming from Ballistics draft, I mean, I'm not saying that draft is by any means weak. That is an incredibly dangerous draft. But I feel if Dignitas wins, it's here. Feels like the drafts are very even uh, in terms of like what they got in terms of comfort, aside from the maybe the, the full tank choke that they got going on. So, uh, you know, we said there was a lot on Thrall. You mentioned that there was a lot on Stitches to land those hooks and get it going. I think it's a very EU versus Korea draft as well. Stitches sees barely any play anymore in the other regions. We have consistently played Stitches in Europe. Uh, JPL is a great Stitches player, but it's going to be the big question. Can he hit his hooks or not? Sometimes, yes, it's a team game, but sometimes it really comes down to one man. Like, if he yeah. doesn't have good aim, then you will not get the pickoffs. The whole draft will fail, so there's a big burden on his shoulders. And I guess that's the other really nice thing about Stitches in general, is he does have that late game power spike. Once you do have the fishing hook, that becomes a monster threat on the table. So when you just look at the layout, yes, we do have a bit of a mid-game spike here that's really nice here for Ballistics when it comes to the objective. But once we reach the late game, if things are still quite even, it does once again look nice for Dignitas just because the sheer power of pulling someone out with that hook. If you grab that on Lunara, she can't get away. I don't know if anyone really reaches the late game against Ballistics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we heard rumors around the practice area where after 20 games, a top team practicing against a team like Ballistics is like, wow, we just reached level 20 in one of our 20 losses. That's the kind of uh, fear factor that's building up for Ballistics here. They end games in 7 minutes, 10 minutes, 11 minutes, 13. And, you know, average game length is like 14, 18 minutes, but Ballistics does it real fast. All right, well, the time has come for game number two to begin, so make some noise as we jump into Battlefield of Eternity. Thank you very much, Jake. It is time here to see how we have on the left-hand side. It will be Team Ballistic. We have Yonghua going to be playing Alarak. Nashua Jaina on Lunara. Noblesse on Johanna. SC, SC going to play Valet. Swoy on Malfury. And give it up for Ballistics! And on the right side, in the red, hailing from Europe, Ethereal Angel on Thrall, Bakery on Brightwing, JPL on Stitches, Mena on Leaving, Snitch on Savannas. It is Team Dictators! This is one of the maps where they're gonna have to put themselves on in the map indeed. Because right now, if they are not able to win this, going two games down against Ballistics would be catastrophic. Already looking for a hook on towards Swoy in front of his gate, not successful. What was Swoy doing there? He was uh, three versus four. If he got hooked, he would have certainly died. But mm -hmm. good, uh, you know, movement there. If you see the hook coming, it's almost impossible to be hit by it if there's no other pressure because there is a delay. It's those blind hooks, the hooks where there's a lot going on that are going to be more effective. There we go with the first one. Polymorph will not be able to come out because of the immediate reaction there by Noblesse. Turning on Iron Skin makes him unstoppable which means no Polymorph or stun can possibly hit him. Yeah, indeed, Mene just uh, calculating all angles there and able to hit with a combo, but not enough up towards the top as well. It's interesting to note the Thrall versus wow. Alarak matchup. Athero is not getting the good end of this. It is difficult to lane against an Alarak. Yeah, I mean, Alarak and Thrall, they both have lightning. They yep. both have self-healing, mm -hmm. but it's all going to be about will Thrall hit the Feral Spirit and will Alarak Ooh. hit his combination, his telekinesis pull into that silence that Discord strike it does so much damage and from the looks of it although we missed it it looks like he is hitting his combo Jongha there on Alarak yeah. in the top lane yeah doing very well for himself he has uh, Athero going very deep into this using that wind fury that is going to be a tussle back and forth up towards the top but Mene down towards the bottom I feel like you may as well nickname him the Oracle when it comes to Li Ming somehow some way he's getting so much damage out as Li Ming already looking at the hero damage done uh, seeing about 4.6k on his side, although Sylvanas is contributing a lot as well. The Immortals are spawning a fortuitous position for Dignitas, actually, who can start to put a bit of damage on it, even as we see the format rotation for Ballistics having to travel all the way up to the other Immortal. But look at this, Dignitas is deciding not to attack. They respect the power of Alarak and the roots from Malfurion, they are such good defenders. So how are you going to play this? Well, you defend your own as well. You try to play off of a hook and you remember, Whoop. don't go in too near the Immortal because Alarak can pull you in. Unstoppable Iron Skin there as Noblesse will just back away for a moment while they're tussling 
uh, here as well. Important to note, Valor SCSC has gone for Monster Hunter at level one, wow. which is very uncommon. He's realizing that they have, well, you know, to do something against the Immortal here. So Try and race it. Monster Hunter on Valor means two and a half times as much damage against non-heroes, mm. against minions and monsters like the Immortal with your Hungering Arrow. And that's going to help a little bit with the trading. And instead, he gives up that mana uh, mana increase that he gets from the level 1 and the movement speed increase. So he's going to be a little bit less mobile, but he'll be a better damager on the Immortal. Yeah, very interesting little way. Uh, the adaptation oh, that turn. Lunara gets attacked here, attempts to actually blow her up, not successful. That's a double combo there from Zhonghua to catch two. Didn't silence Mene during it though, just pulled him away and it will not be no trade just yet. Small experience lead here for Ballistic. Somehow they have been grinding out a bit of XP from the lane and they reach level four and a half. No takedowns and yet such a big lead. And they also do more damage on the uh, Immortal. And level four, kind of uncommon again. Oh, that's oh, going to be a nice run. Will they be able to blow up on Fury? Yes, they will. First blood goes over to Dignitas. But they want to try and get a little bit more against it. Yunghua under some threat here. Snitch at the back quite low. After all, might be in Dead Man's Land though. And oh, he will what? go down one what? for one. Mene, Mene going for SCSC, he gets away with something like 5 HP, oh. monstrous, so close here as Dignitas almost gets like a triple kill there. Crazy stuff to start off this game, really. And for now, Ballistics are so low on the other side, and they will be able to get this punish, uh, sorry, Immortal to start things off. I mean, Dignitas thought that Ballistics is going to tap the fountain, that's why Dignitas decided not to defend the left side Immortal. And Ballistics reacted by actually just attacking the Immortal with 5% of their life. Getting the most out of the situation, and they get the Immortal. Now, it's a pretty small shield. The expected result of this objective here is two towers down, maybe a, a little bit of damage on the Immortal. So let's see who can out perform the expectations. And just gonna try and slow this down for as long as possible here. Snitch just throwing out his Shadow Daggers. That's a combo on towards Bright Wing. Vapor, you've gotta be careful there, my friend. As for now, Minute just, just sort of trying to fire down against this. That's gonna be a hook on towards Malfury in again. Polymorphs, will he get out? Yes, he does, just at the very oh, end. Oh, Snitch going in the pick up the kill on towards Valor. Combo tries to come out to Zhongla. Doesn't quite get him. Noblesse may end up falling here. He's going in a very precarious spot. <laughs> Great job there by Dignitas, making Ballistics retreat. And nonetheless, the Immortal did do a lot of damage on oh. the bottom right. Immortal, oh, 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 Bakery! Oh, what a kill from Ballistics! Great move by Ballistics with the pull into the roots. Both of these teams have an appetite for those kills. Great job there. You've got to be so careful here when you're going up against an Alarak. I mean, we've we've talked about it in opening week. We talked about it coming here to BlizzCon as well. We saw how Rich was able to play it. The combo potential and blow potential is so real here from Ballistics. If you do not respect it, so they've got to be careful. Siege camp has been taken by Ballistics, and let's just take one sec look back at that immortal push that uh, Ballistics did just now. The classical move would be to leave one person in the top lane to get bonus experience and do a four-man push in the bottom. Or maybe even vice versa. Four in the top, one in the bottom. Team Ballistics groups up a lot. They just sent five people down there and it forced Thrall to also rotate down, but he was a little bit late. So Ballistics is forcing their game style upon Dignitas here. And for me, some of the most exciting things about Heroes is not necessarily, you know, the team fights that go on or anything like that. It's just the adaptation in talents. Valor is still going for a very unconventional build because of the map. Now mixing in repeating arrow at level seven, which means that Hungering Arrow is reset. No Ballesta, though. Wow. No going way. in very, very deep here. I don't know if he's going to be able to do with this. The Bakery being focused out. Lunara manages to pick up the kill with Lee Ming going down at the front as well. Ballistics, what a brilliant move. Yeah, Nacho Jin there with the golden going straight for Brightwing. She had no one to protect herself. Stitches falls as well. This is unreal. You do not go to the other side, to the Bruiser camp. There's this rule. You go there, you get too greedy, you try to steal that Bruiser. Five versus five, you lose. Done. No counter argument. But Ballistics did exactly that. Johanna moves in, the right focus fire, and Dignitas is falling apart there. They are rocking this map right now, our Ballistics. Taking a very, very strong lead here. And if they're able to gain this next Immortal, they will be in an even better position than we saw before. No bless. Just scouting out this location. They know that the defense is on. But Korea now, uh, Ballistics will just back off for a moment, look for 10, and then it is impossible for Team Dignitas to fight in the next minute and a bit. 
five versus three takedowns, level 10 versus eight and a half. This Immortal is going to be going down, and the value of Silva... Oh, oh, nice hook there! But Iron Skin will be activated. No Polymorphs shall follow up. And that is 10. That is an easy Immortal here. Four Ballistics, and now they mix in the Thornwood Vine. They go for Strafe, Twilight Dream, that Blessed Shield, and Counter Attack as well, coming out here from Alarak. Yeah, Counter Strike makes Alarak invulnerable for a second, and unstoppable as well. And he will not be able to take any damage. It's a great way to save yourself from hooks. And you do this powerful Counter-Strike in a cone shape in front of you right afterwards, a second delay. And in comes the push. Uh, see if Dignitas has can actually deal with this, it's a lot of power here. Nobles, Nobles with the flank from the south, he goes all the way around, but JPL sees him coming. So and you can, you can see as well, Brightwing down to the bottom, they need to soak, they need to be able to get level 10 before they can take a fight. That means also it's very difficult for them to even put this Immortal down, which is doing big damage here for Ballistics. Yeah, Brightwing is a decent part of the defense on that Immortal, the poke damage. Now Mena is going to keep trying to do damage on the Immortal with his Magic Missiles, with the Arcane Orb, but look at this. Uh -huh. It's attacking the keep, I think this might be a keep here for yeah. Ballistics and who knows what else. They might attempt some combos come out from uh, Jay as well as uh, down towards there from Mene. Here comes Brightwing, once again knowing that level 10, it's going to be too late actually to get it. There's going to be a hook, but they don't even get Alarak, he uses Counter-Strike, pushes himself away with Telekinesis. That's a keep down, Ballistics on the wall path. Yeah, great play by Ballistics with the cleanse by Malfurion, removing uh, Alarak's threat there, and then with the Counter-Strike, the heals, and everything is falling to dust here for Team Dignitas. They're down to one keep. They need to start doing something very drastic here, Kolaris. Yes, they do, and that might be moving through the middle here and looking for a potential pickoff if they can find oh. it. Nacho Jin is down towards that bottom position as the rest of them are going to be rotate down. It looks like Dignitas didn't get anything from this exchange. There was this one second window where JPL might have done a blind hook into Nacho Jin, but yeah. how could he possibly have known? Nice. Dignitas took a chance at life here. They will not be able to get that takedown. Now it's Ballistics who's moving forward. A two level lead is enough for them. Another team might be more passive and say, let's wait for level 13, mm. but they are doing an attack here, Ballistics. Blessed Shield misses, Thundering from the side. The combo on the Thero Angel at the bottom, and he goes down. Yeah, and that's going to be JPL under a lot of threat as well here. Here goes Strafe, SESC, trying to do something. Polymorph is able to save JPL for a moment, but is it going to be enough? Yes, it will be. They only lose Athero. He was looking for that flag, like we mentioned. Oh, Mene, no, he's in the middle of nowhere. Oh, the beast step comes out, and even from <laughs> Mene as well. That will be Li Ming falling to her death. Yeah, we never may know exactly how Mene was uh, corralled there into that bottom lane, but Ballistics maneuvered her there perfectly, even as they pressured Stitches there. Ballistics is starting to move in. They do not have Sylvanas, but they don't need it. Oh, look at that, the combo with the silence and the root throw goes down from behind the gate. Unbelievable stuff here from Ballistics once again. After all, just even stepping out just a little bit further than his keep. Never mind the wall, as you're mentioning. And now that is a disaster here for Dignitas. They are being run ragged here by the Super League champions. Ballistics showing what they are made of here. They haven't lost a map yet. They are up here 1-0 and they look very strong here in the second game. And they have the talent lead. The Immortal is spawning again. So Dignitas, they need a miracle here. Oh yeah, they do. And where will they find it is the question. Because all you do, you can see Ballistics positioning in a very, very uh, aggressive manner down towards the bottom, looking to rotate around just in case Dignitas move out of position. Future Bile's already been popped, that's a lot of damage on towards Alaric to start things. He's using Counter-Strike, that's a great Sundering. Oh my god, what? the Telekinesis! Oh, two go down! Ballistic! Oh my Swat. god! What orchestration from Ballistics! It looked bad at I just the beginning. I just woke up from a dream where Jonga had died on Alarak. Yes. But it was not true. He got cleansed, he got healed, he used this Counter-Strike, the Sundering rolled over him, he lay under a train, and he came out let's, and he survived. Let's watch that again, because that was beautiful. You can see Alarak in a lot of trouble, telekinesis himself away from the harm's fate, and then the amount of damage from Twilight Dream, from Strafe coming out, 
Oh my god, we are back in this. Dignitas is arrived again, but they might not be for much longer. That was beautiful. Yeah, Ballistics. we're back in this game, but I don't think Dignitas is. JPL is going to get corralled here against this wall. The combos are too strong. The zoning at Tango comes out, and that is going to be another takedown here. And let's not forget that that was just the first jab. But here comes the sledgehammer blow, and I think we're going to see Ballistics crush Dignitas like a walnut. A full immortal here to push on towards the keep. I think Dignitas is surprised by what just happened to them. They were blindsided by that as Ballistics now take down the next keep. That Immortal is still at full health, Grubby. They show absolute masterclass potential from every single move they make. Yeah, here they go with the Blessed Shield. Savannah is in the forefront. Will he have to get away? No! The combo there by Jonah. Telekinesis finishes him. And we see this core falling like a piece of old parchment here, shriveling up at Ballistics with a four level lead. Win the second game. Beautiful stuff as Ballistics are one game away from their second final in as many months. What a way to put their stamp on it. Look how happy they are as well. They know that they are in the absolute driving seat. And that fight, that fight, Grubby, amazing, amazing. They're doing everything right here, Ballistics. They are showing they are not MVP Black, and yet Dignitas, they are showing up a little bit weaker than we saw Fnatic. If indeed Ballistics is able to do it here and make it to the finals, I think they will have a challenge in Fnatic. But so far, they didn't find a challenge for themselves yet. Ballistics is just dominant here. You know, it opened up with a pretty decent start from Dignitas. They had some good fights, they showed a lot of promise, but the moment Ballistics took the lead, they just pressed each and every little millimeter of an advantage. It was absolutely incredible. I mean, they are dominating this series right now, and uh, from a European perspective, this is hard to watch. <laughs> <laughs> they could say that, but I'm just in awe. I am in awe of how they were... Oh, yeah. that, that one fight, I, that was the most amazing little position that they... Alaric was... Dead. Almost dead. Almost dead. But Guess no. what we're going to see again. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get straight to it. I mean, they are going to jump into that game once more. So right here, let's play it at half speed, maybe. Like, just yes. watch this. Alaric at this point, he should be dead. Everything is about to connect. Look at that move. Moves himself forward, and this is just where he turns all around against them. They blow up one after another, and I still can't believe that Alaric didn't die. The strafe comes in and finishes the job. Oh. At this point, of course, they are a talent ahead. They already snowballed it a little bit, but I still, I feel this fight is very symptomatic for the coordination that Ballistics showed throughout the entire game. They are on a different level. It was beautiful. I can't emphasize how much that was beautiful. Alarak pushes himself out of harm's way of the combos from many, of the haunting wave coming out from Snitch, almost into other harm's way, because he's pushing himself into the warriors, mind you, and then... The Twilight Dream was there. Oh. <laughs> I have this mental imagery here of Team Ballistics members. Uh, they have these, all these meteors landing around them and there's cars passing them by and they're just like this. Like, <laughs> they're, yeah. they're so comfortable, they're just dodging yeah. everything. They have that one small glimpse in the future, it's just like half a second, but it's enough to dodge everything. Exactly. Uh, I mean, this is just incredible. I mean, we've yeah. got to respect here how Ballistics is doing this. They're playing on a completely different level, and they deserve everything that yeah. they could possibly get. You couldn't have said it better. Like, they are playing absolutely amazing. And if you're ever looking for, like, the perfect play, the perfect team coordination, the perfect communication between team members, that's where it's at right now. And I just don't see how Dignitas is coming back to this. They need a monster draft to make this happen. Well, we're going to go to a commercial break before game number three, so stay tuned. We're going to find out if Dignitas can bring it back. The Heroes of the Storm Fall Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers.
the store. Prepare for Heroes Brawl, a new game mode that breaks all the rules. Rated T-13. What's in a name? Well, that depends on what you do with it. Put it out there. Get good with it. Like, really good. Get it on a team. Get it on a big monthly check. Make your whole city know it. Check that. The whole world. Get it on the back of a champion. That's your name. Better yet, become a champion. What's in a name? Well, that's up to you. Everything that I do in my life is working towards getting on to the big stage of video gaming. I don't want to get second place this year. Like, I'm, I'm going for first. I won't be happy unless we win. My name is Andrew Rodriguez, and I go to University of Texas at Arlington. Daniel Lee and I go to University of Connecticut. My name is David Young, and I go to school at University of Tennessee, Knoxville. My name is Michael Udall, and I go to ASU. Heroes of the Dorm is an amateur tournament focused on college teams, playing not for prize money, but for tuition. This is my first year competing in Heroes of the Dorm. Gaming at first was just a hobby, but now it's kind of evolved into part of my life. I grew up in Mesa, Arizona. Gaming was definitely frowned upon. I would think, gee, what a waste of time. You guys ought to be studying algebra or anything worthwhile. My parents used to hate when I played, but now they're like, this is so cool, you're going to Seattle for playing a video game. Welcome to the Heroes of the Dorm Heroic Four. Here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, four college teams have come to battle it out. We started over a month ago, and now we have Tennessee, UT Arlington, UConn, and Arizona State. We all felt really good after the win, but we came here to win the whole thing, so the work's not over yet. You don't reach that level without the dedication and the focus and the endless hours honing your craft. It's gonna take a determination and discipline, just like succeeding in anything in life. It's just, it's intense, that's the best way to put it. Until you play the game and try to excel at it, you just, you have no idea. An outlet like that where students come together and, and share the same interest, that's what it's all about. This was the future of esports that we imagined. Taking a lot of energy, blows up in a matter of seconds. Shot low on HP, but the boy with the oh, they are going for the core. They're going to be able to save it in time. The Heroes of the Storm Fall Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers.
Welcome back to the Heroes of the Storm Fall Championship Semifinals, where Ballistics is currently up 2-0 over Team Dignitas. We're actually going straight into the draft, where we have Kerrigan and Tychus Ban in the first pick on Fall Up. Ball again immediately being picked up. Dignitas on Infernal Shrine securing themselves at least a bit of wave clear right off the store. And like, it's going to be really hard for them to come back into this. Ballistics is looking fantastic so far. Very much so on a map like this. Infernal Shrines being the go to. And oh, Ballistics um... started with Tassadar and Illidan. We know how their comp is already going to look. How yeah. can Dignitas respond? It's a Korean classic. They make it look incredibly powerful with that pairing. And of course, just so good for a map like Infernal Shrines. Now guys, Illidan has somewhere around a 25% win rate in this tournament. But we've seen a huge dependency on Illidan compositions by some of the lesser regions. It's time to be schooled by the number one favorite here of this tournament to see how this is going to get played out. Illidan was the story of Dignitas when they went to Korea. They always talked about the high prioritization that we see in Illidan in Korean drafts. We've seen him banned so many times against them and how much they struggled actually against Illidan compositions and the way that the Koreans played. They re react immediately with a Sonya to establish control on the shrines and put pressure on him. This is definitely going to be a tough game for them. Now let's explain to all the new viewers here for Heroes of the Storm. You guys in the crowd, you're awesome. And I want to explain why is Illidan so good? Evasion. He can dodge all basic attacks. So how do you counter him? Well, you've got to get some magic damage out. And that is why they pick Sonya. Other counter picks against him is something that can just shut him down, lock him down and stop his auto attacks. As that is the way that he keeps himself alive. The more he attacks with that Betrayer's Thirst, the more he heals and the more his cooldowns come back. So it's very important to get a draft with high magic damage and very high lockdown. And yeah, you don't think of Slam as being magic damage, right. but it does count as ability power yeah. in Heroes of the Storm. But Sonya is also, she just excels when it comes to this map, in particular with the Skeletal Defenders on the Shrine. The objective all about getting the last hit on all the Skeletons when she whirlwinds. Very valuable in that <laughs> instance. Oh, Taranda. She and saw the lights of Elune for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> Great cosplay there. It's so cool to see everyone here walking around at the BlizzCon in different kinds of outfits. These characters that we've come to know and love in the Blizzard universes. ETC band coming out. Do you know what's very interesting is that they picked up Malfurion yes. to try and go up against an Illidan. Normally yeah. you would think, let's go Brightwing, quick, get Brightwing. Ooh, but I that's an interesting choice. Yeah, now also like if you think about it, like one of the choices that we oftentimes see against Illidan is of course the Muradin, and they were very well aware that them going into a Sonya Malfurion and mm -hmm. the chances of them locking down a Muradin are just zero to none because Ballistics, what do they do? They ban out one of the CC tanks, ETC, and guess what their next pick is going to be? They're going to go for that Muradin. There's a very high chance for that. But Dignitas, they want to have the silence. I think it's a smart removal of Rhaegar. Uh, Rhaegar, Tassadar, Illidan is this uh, trifecta, this uh, pairing that we've seen so often. The lightning shield damage on Illidan makes him so hard to ignore. And then that healing, ancestral healing, right as you almost have Illidan, you would get topped off. Brightwing, however, <laughs> Muradin, both of them are counters to Illidan. Yeah. They support Illidan pretty well, but mostly they're removing mm -hmm. the capability of Dignitas to get that Muradin. I am worried for Dignitas. <laughs> so, okay, so what does Dignitas do here? Probably they need Johanna with the blind against Illidan, uh -huh, but yeah. she doesn't have a hard stun. So it's kind of like good and bad. Another good thing about Johanna is wave clear here on the shrines. If you can just out kill the skeletons, uh, that is going to be pretty good for Dignitas. So do they go Johanna? I would say that they have to. I mean, at this point, I would really expect a Johanna. And yes, there she is. The one thing that I'm really curious about right now, I mean, and uh, Kales was already talking about this, oh. and then Lili. All right, double support Lili. Now this makes a little bit more sense. Welcome to Europe. Welcome Ready to the European <laughs> Galaris, you've been asking about that Sonya and about the Malfurion pick, and we've been saying it could be that right wing, but now we have the double support. And as Krabi said, Illidan, he relies on the auto attacks. And Lily here, she's about the blinds. That so is. you blind him, you remove his survivability, his damage, and then anything that he has done, you try to outheal with that jug of a thousand cups. Or maybe even Water Dragon. Lily has been a counterpick to Illidan for several months now by yeah. several European teams. 
We're gonna see that little panda coming out, and, and we'll see if that works. And Kale Fox! Oh. Kale Fox comes out for the final pick for Ballistics. The thing is, is overall, even if it's Twilight Dream with us as well, Illidan has a lot of threats that he's gonna have to deal with. Yeah, he definitely does. But Kale Fox, he's making a bit of revival here. Some heroes just want to see the world burn, and he's definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen Kelthas being drafted really in the fall regionals. And here, the number one favorite team, 2 0 leads, they're bringing out their secret weapons here. Kelthas has great strength control, good damage, but he's very difficult to play right now. He's vulnerable, he uh, has a low health pool. So let's see if that's going to work out. You are not prepared. We'll see if that Lily pick is enough preparation for Dignitas. I mean, Let's just talk about this just for a moment again. I know we've been harping on it, but they went to Korea. They played against Illidan and several times they got destroyed by him. Mm -hmm. Of course they thought about potential counters to him. So this is something where they must feel incredible confident, especially since they said like, we don't need Brightwing. We don't need that Merlin right now. It is just the Lily, the Malfurion and the Sonya. Yeah, specifically we saw some highlight clips coming out of Korea where uh, the Dignitas yep. members were practicing against Illidan and were dumbfounded about, uh, you know, countering him. But that was on the ladder and this is on the tournament stage. There's actual drafting going on here. This is their full team in attendance and Lily has been their answer to Illidan for a very long time. We don't see it coming out a lot and the, the amount of heroes being picked in Fall Regionals has just been expanded by one or two once again in this draft. <laughs> Right, with Kale Foss entering the fray as well. I'm really curious to see how he will pan out in the situation. Yes, he is good for the control of the shrine. Throwing out the flame strike, the living bombs, lots of splash damage to get those kills. But at the same time, he is another stun on the table, which could be a threat there for <laughs> the Lili. I, I know, know this guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> we see you, J.O. And he still believes. <laughs> Hello. There's no way someone that tall can actually hide. <laughs> <laughs> he can try, though. <laughs> No, like, I mean, talking about this draft, the one thing that I also want to emphasize real quickly is that we have not only a Stormbolt for the stun, we have the Gravity Labs, we have Brightwing, and also the Force Wall on Tassada. And uh, we've been talking a lot about this map where there's so many choke points where a well-placed Force Wall can really cut off a team. So this is one of the threats for Dignitas heading into the objective fights. Now, Dignitas has double support. Maybe they can out-survive everything. I think it's a super cool draft, the most original yet that we've seen in this series as well. And I'm so pumped to see this game already. And they have to do something like that. They have to kind of push the forefront a little bit. I mean, yes, of course, we've seen Lili a lot in Europe, etc. when it comes to dealing with an Illidan. But they have to try just go all in, trying to get rid of Illidan. I know Kael'thas is another threat, but if they can get rid of the Illidan with this, they could have a bright future in this game. Well, I can't wait to see how these compositions collide. Game number three on Infernal Shrines is ready. Make some noise. Yes, we will, BlizzCon, because it's game number three here as we get right on into it. To the left-hand side, it will be Yongha going to be playing Illidan, Nacho Jin on Tassadar, Noblesse on Muradin, SCSC going to play Kael'thas, Swoy on a bright wing. It is Team Ballistics. And on the right side, in the red, a thorough angel on Sonya, Bakery on Malfury on JPL, and on Joanna, Mene on Vala, we saved the best for last, Snitch on Lily. It is Team Dignitas. The European community is never going to let me live this down for now, but there you go. It's Lee Lee, and yes, we are here. So good to go. Dignitas bringing it out, trying to deal with the Illidan. It's a huge threat. They have to pay it respect, and indeed they are with this comp. All right, we have the five-man grouping here in the middle for Dignitas. They feel a lot more confident than on some of the other battlegrounds. Accepting that five versus five if it does happen. But look at this, Ballistics in the top lane. Illidan is starting to damage that tower. Ballistics not just sending out their separate constituents to different lanes, but they're actually doing a two-man push on the tower, 80% damage. That's a pretty big lead. This is them trying to already assert the way we've seen them play this map before. But, but, but Kalaris, I think Dignitas needs to do the same thing. They cannot just yeah. form and rotate. They need to go for that bottom tower, and they're doing exactly that. Now, double tower down for Dignitas and the whole gate in the top. What is happening in the meantime at the bottom? Oh! Soy! Soy goes down, but so does Sonya. It's a one for one. Noblesse under pressure here, but it's going to be difficult to actually catch up with him and kill him off in case he has to walk toss, etc. Elili is trying to slow down that push up towards the top. It is not easy though here as that next wave's coming in. Lily just doesn't have that much wave clear yet. Yeah, she doesn't have the wave clear. She can kind of stop Illidan from doing as much damage, but she is going to lose this one. And if Dignitas continues to under-respond, 
to this top wave. Every time their wave comes in, we're going to see Ballistics do a lot of damage on the fort. Now, with them, uh, Ballistics taking that well up towards the top, if Dignitas has to go up against a temple, our shrine being uh, activated at the top, that is going to be very difficult for them to contend because they do not have that well to go back to. And it, oh, 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 it is indeed at the top. No fountain. So Dignitas, they need to start thinking on their feet here. Mm. They do not have that fountain to fall back to. So what do they do? Do they start to put less prioritization on it in general and just go for the middle and bottom towers? Or do they go hard, and try to kill someone fast? Either way, this was really bad luck for Dignitas and very yeah. well played for Ballistics They as might well. go hard on towards Illidan at the moment. Brightwing's not with them yet, but she can face shift in if she's needed. She's going to go towards SCSC. You can see in the, in the middle Illidan blinded, but getting out of a position there where he can be potentially in a threat. So Athero needs to get on the shrine, needs to get some work done soon. Now, of course, double support here for Dignitas means they have more sustain than they normally would, even though they lack the fountain. They were looking pretty good on health and mana. It's Team Dignitas and starting to try and contest a shrine. Small lead in the skeletons for Dignitas, 15 versus uh, 16 versus 16. Now, of course, it Whoop. keeps rapidly changing. Nobles. Always somehow manages to get out with this Muradin. Nyon, unkillable, is Nobles on Muradin. Yonghua just uh, soaking up some more health once again with some of those auto attacks. Goes quite deep in there. Jones yeah. caps him with a condemn, trying to put as much damage. Blinded at the moment, but goes back in, knowing that the blinds are down. The oh. Skeleton Defenders going in favor of Dignitas at the moment. That's a Lili. great gravity lapse. Lili is quite low. She will escape at the back. Uh, Lili is still ready for adventure. She almost oh. went down there. Dignitas, they get the Punisher, and it's going to be an arcane Punisher. And that victory for them came down to having so much sustain yeah. and denial of the damage coming out from Illidan. Double blinds, Lily and Joanna shutting down Illidan, putting the damage on him, and so far, Dignitas' comp looks like it's working pretty well. Now, Lily went back for some healing and is going to go to the middle, to the bottom, to get XP, which means this is a 5 versus 4 for Ballistics. They're trying to capitalize on the fact the Dignitas is sending Lily bottom. She did not come top, and that's a Thero Angel down. Yes, he falls, and that was a pretty easy kill there for Ballistics to start things off. The Punisher really didn't get a huge amount done there either. It was great. Uh, um, what's the word to describe it? It was great. great. Manipulation is the way to describe it. Uh, from Ballistics to just pull that across, make sure that there wasn't any reinforcing damage coming out from Team Dignitas. And that's the kind of thing that Ballistics does here. They group up as five at the top. They completely forget about the middle and the bottom wave of XP, and they just want to go and get kills. Now, the net result of that is fairly neutral. You get one kill, but you lose a few waves. However, as the game goes on, and Ballistics keeps prioritizing like that, they can get some small leads here. So Dignitas just slightly overstayed. They failed to recognize that they were sending Lily bottom, and then that Ballistics was not sending anyone middle and bottom. But there would be four versus five. Small mistake. Dignitas do get that double tower, 20% damage on the top four. And we just have Ballistics in this small lead here. Well, if that previous fight was anything to go by, maybe a prelude of things to come here. Dignitas can potentially hold their own on a map that is good for Ballistics. Trying to block out Jay to start things and trying to get a gravity lapse as well as a few bits of combos from that flame strike on towards him. Doesn't do too much though, it's Johanna and thus very, very strong. Nice new skin there on Kel'Thas. I was having trouble recognizing who it was at first. <laughs> Kel'Tha, nice. I mean, we barely see any Kel'Thas at all in this tournament. And so it's, it's just worth it even just to look at his build. A lot of people are going for Convection at level one here, where you get that bonus damage on Flame Strike, but he's going for Mana Addict, gets the Arcane Barrier, gets bonus Mana, Netherwind, more range on his stun, more Mana back, and then finally Burn Flesh. If he hits multiple people with Flame Strike, it will be empowered to do a lot of extra damage. And that is perfect on this battleground, because people will end up grouping here. Uh, Ballistics feeling confident and keen to start this one already. Brightwing up towards the top. Dignitas might again once again want to try and push the issue here. On towards Illidan! Oh, but the Brightwing comes in and will give him a shield to help one out. But once again, but, uh, Denial, uh, Dignitas even, wrestled them off of this shrine. And they're getting an uh, all right lead. Yeah, Dignitas is doing really well in the team fights, And I really feel like if they can stay relatively even with Ballistics, they can do very well. Sonya becomes an absolute monster in the late game. 
No, Nobles making a big move here, going for the backline, but oh. did he chew up more than he could? Nobles ends up going down very quickly, Yonghua trying to get out of there, will dash away with friend or foe, managing to get out, but another Punisher goes over to Team Dingtas. They need to capitalize on this one well, they need to catch up an experience. Yes, these next 10 seconds are very important. What did Dignitas decide to do? They sent Malfurion to the middle, get a little bit of XP, and I feel like Dignitas needs to do the same thing as Ballistics does sometimes, grouping up now, making sure that that Punisher gets more value than the previous one. The lower away from Ballistics there, making sure that the Punisher doesn't do as much to these structures. A great phase shift, uh, sorry, a dimensional shift from Nacho Jin to make sure he doesn't get slammed. And ah. now that is going to be A4, potentially going over to them. They were looking for more, but Nacho Jin gets away again. Very smart play by Dignitas here. Bakery on Alfurion was in the middle. He was getting the experience there. He was ready to help his team if it became necessary. However, look at this. This uh, one hero. Deja vu, I feel. I remember yes. this doing quite a lot before in one specific instance. Yeah, Team uh, Zero Panda, I believe it was, yeah. uh, with Illidan on this battleground. You send Illidan to do solo siege damage. It's pretty crazy. He completely didn't, quote unquote, help the team in the team fight or with XP. He's just got a fort by himself. Ballistics got equal value to a Punisher with a single hero. Great tactical play by them. All right, so let's see how they're going to try and capitalize on this. It's Jug of a Thousand Cups out for Lili. No Wars Dragon, so obviously they've got Twilight Dream there uh, oh, available. Yeah. So across the board, they've got a lot of healing outcome, and there's not too much to try and stop the Jug of a Thousand Cups if it's rightly positioned. Yeah, I mean, Polymorph would be the, the easiest one that's not yeah, based yeah. on uh, a skill shot. So you can just click on Lili. So Lili needs to stay out of range of Brightwing. Mm -hmm. Hold that thought. A little bit of anchoring there by Nobles, scouting out for his team. Uh, other heroics, Reign of Vengeance by Vala, not going for Strafe. So it's really about locking down this target and trying to take them down. Now note, Ballistics does not have Cleanse. If there's enough damage for Dignitas, yeah. they can stun someone, they can root them, they can stun them again. And that's going to be a kill on almost anybody. I mean, let's be honest, Kobe. At this point in time, these combos as well. The fight goes on down here. Oh, oh, the silence goes on him as well there. Will he be able to get away? Will Noble S find a way out of here? It looks like he will. Zhonghua was causing disruption towards the back lines. And they will escape, but this is the best position Dignitas has been all series long. This is their best chance to get themselves back on the scoreboard. I completely agree, Kalaris. This could be the 2-1 here. Uh, don't want to jinx it too much, though I would definitely love to see more games between these two teams. Ballistics and Dignitas 2-0. It's a best of five. The deciding game potentially for who will go into the grand finals and will meet Fnatic there and be uh, having a chance to fight for BlizzCon Championship. All right, the Shrine is started once again after we're already on top of that. Very good control with it, but meanwhile, in the back, there is a lot of pressure on towards the back line here of Dignitas. Natrogen taking quite a bit of damage there, as he will have to get away from JPL. The Phoenix has been thrown down. Menit is in a lot of trouble himself here, being focused. Drug of Thousand Cups comes out to try and keep him healed up and alive. They're trying to back off from all of this. No, Nat oh, no, 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 very low. No, no, they pick him up. They need to get Illidan now. Illidan's still on the back line, trying to do as much as possible. Natrogen might go down up towards top. Dignitas now trying to turn it around. Oh, Athero, does he still have a spear? And oh, all the force wall oh. and the gravity lapse. A furious assault here by Ballistics, but it was buffeted away by Dignitas. They withstood the storm that was Ballistics and are still standing. Wow, Athero Angel and JPL were all the way on the left yeah, side, yeah. and Illidan saw a chance to dive the back line. But guess what? Lily, she can take care of herself. Yes, she can. The Jug of a Thousand Cups did so much healing during that. If Ballistics wants to try and go for those kind of fights, they need to find a way onto Lily, need to stop her from putting out that amount of immense healing that they can put out. And it, there isn't all that much damage on the side of Ballistics, really. It's Illidan, it's Kel'Thas. Yeah. The rest are supporting oh. roles, cameos, if you will, in this oh. movie. Snitch, Lily, Lily, I've seen her get away from some crazy things, and this is gonna get added to the list. Oh. She gets away from the Force Wall, she gets away from Phoenix. Ballistic didn't have the damage to follow up, and up towards the top, 39 out of 40 skeletons been taken here by Dignitas. They are in the driving seat now. Now, why does Dignitas not get that last skeleton to make it 40 out of 40? Well, this is a tactical play. You want to buy a little bit of time for your teammates and to make sure, are you okay? Annie, are you okay? So, yes, everyone is okay. They're going to get that objective now and they're going to start pushing with that. However, Ballistics never want to sit still. We'll do an immediate counterattack and get the bottom four. 
Uh, it's a very good decision making by them overall. They know that it's a little bit harder to actually contest with that because there wasn't a wall available to them. Pushing with this Punisher, you can see why Brightwing is there just to slow this down a little oh, bit. Oh, the stun. oh, she goes down! Dignitas on the wall pass now! They are looking for more damage! Look at the positioning! They might even go further, but they realize that they forced the back. They're repositioning themselves on the other side of the keep. I don't think they'll go too further unless they get a pick. Yeah, I think they should try maybe a little bit more. Uh, this is a great chance actually to get follow-up kills here for Dignitas. Punisher's still there, they got what they came oh. for, but Brightwing isn't here yet. They're just checking to see if Ballistics will overextend. That's it. They didn't, and now they will pull back. And Ballistics left Illidan on the other side to do just a bit more to that wall, wow. so he was able to gain some value, only losing a Brightwing in that situation, but they lost a keep, and now that means obviously those catapults are going to be spawning in that lane, putting more pressure on against Ballistics. It's the clever classical play by Dignitas, busting down that wall. It has the lowest HP of anything, the turret, yeah. the gate, the side wall, and Brightwing there was caught with her wings down. As Reign of Vengeance came in, they busted her down with the stuns, and they got that kill. The keep is down, and Dignitas is in the lead. Incredible. Good coordination, trying to bring themselves back into this series. As for now, we're seeing uh, Ballistics just rally behind these positions. Brightwing soaking up towards the top, making sure that that lane doesn't get too out of control. You definitely don't want that lane to be pushing on your side of the map as you have to go into a Shrine fight. So equalizing it is very important. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Brightwing will be on babysitting duty there at the top lane several times. Now, this is great opportunity for Dignitas to get the Fallen Shaman camp. I would expect them to try and take it and then not capture it until the shrine becomes available. Super risky move here by Ballistics, trying to steal that away. But I suppose it could have been a nice mm. gambit there if Dignitas over-concentrated on the Impalers here. Uh, and almost nevertheless does get a bit caught by his own team uh, with that Trojan throwing that wall down. But of course... Muradin does have Dwarf Toss, so gets on out of there. Brightwing's still soaking towards the top, okay. getting that 16. I can see things coming to a head here, Kalaris. Mm -hmm. Dignitas has this one appealing objective here. It's the Fallen Shaman. It will push the top wave completely to the core. Yeah. And I thought maybe Ballistics will try to contest this. But they are just going to de-push all the lanes. There's too much going on on other sides. Now, Jongha is positioned once again in a location where he's going to clear this wave. And I think maybe he'll stay at the bottom, maybe hide in the bush or something and he could be setting up for some additional keep damage. And this is the perfect timing for a Shrine for Dignitas with that top lane pushing. Now, of course, Ballistics here, they have to make a decision very quickly. Let's go clean things up and then probably come to the Shrine. But if they lose the Shrine, at least they've got a four in mid lane to keep them uh, stable a little that bit. That is true. This is probably one of the least threatening Punishers yet. It's, an, uh, it's a Mortar Punisher, and it's also going to be having that fort indeed yeah. that it has to deal with. Now, every team fight has gone in favor of Dignitas so far. This could be one of them. And after all, you're taking quite a bit of damage against that. And there was a bit of oh. a blow up towards your one. Use his metamorphosis, keep it separate. Oh. And the same time, the they can go down. down. This yeah. could be a full team up. They've got to be very careful about this. Double no on the retreat out here. Needs to jump away. But that is two going down very, very quickly. Two down for Dignitas there in a five versus three situation. They are chasing Nobles. There is a fallen shaman cap here. There's oh. double catapults. They could be looking to end the game here. 25 seconds on the death timer. They've got to be so, so careful about this too. Ballistic somehow, some way, slow this down, but I don't know if it's going to be easy enough at all. As that was a great little chain bomb action there from a Chaos Pass to try and keep themselves in this position. JPL backing off at the moment. They realize that this defense is quite strong. Our Ballistics has natural gin barely saves himself. Five seconds and five seconds on the death timer. Europe here, Team Dignitas, did not manage to get the core kill. They didn't get any follow-up kills. They lost their momentum there with that po uh, top push there. The catapults have been cleared, so Ballistics gets a second chance at fighting. However, Metamorphosis is not available. This yeah. is still a Punisher to Dignitas. That was them looking for the absolute kill switch because, you know, they realized that if they took this, then there may not be the kill potential instantly. Oh, After all. Angel. Oh, he survives. Oh. Lots of shields. They go for Nobles. Nobles goes down. Big Dignitas. Damage. Five versus four. Uh, Young as well as we're going to have to move on back. Dignitas is now fully in command. They take themselves a Punisher. They are going to march on through the middle of this map with Muradin now. Now there is almost no front line here available for Ballistics. They have to give this up. They have to retreat from this position. Kalaris, I never thought I would say it. Ballistics looks like they are falling apart here. Yes, they don't have Metamorphosis. They don't have Avatar. They've lost every team fight yet, and they take it under poor circumstances. They don't have.
have the survivability. They lose their Meridian, and now they're in a worse spot than they were. They ha Dignitas has proven to themselves that gods can bleed here, as Ballistics are being pushed back against this position, and if they lose this keep as well, they are so hard up against it. Meridian is about to come along. They're manipulating the Punisher very, very well. They will be able to save this position for now. Really well done by Ballistics. The answer to Illidan seems to be here in the Lily Draft, but this game is not over yet. Ballistics oh, is resisting oh. this. Twilight Dream misses. Oh, SCSC! SCSC trying to get out of there as quickly as possible. He had some shields, and that's going to be a, a polymorph going on towards Ethereum to try and slow him down, but they're almost able to rip down. Oh. Browing dives off to Mene. Noble F tries to jump away, but Dignitas once again bringing the fight to Ballistics. Mene there with the deep dive, getting Brightwing. The keep goes down. Catapults have taken care of the shields. 97% Dignitas. Will oh, they be able to push here? They failed the core all in once. They will not try again. They're gonna take their lead and milk it. Level 19 and a half. They are very close to their storm tier yeah. talents. At level 20, it's the strongest talent tier of the entire game. And Dignitas is looking to exploit it. Is this the swing they need, really? I mean, the, at this point, as you say, they've got a huge window now where they can exploit that storm tier talent, the level 20 coming in here. Ballistics trying to scramble to find themselves a position in this game, trying to take the Satyr camp, the uh, camp down towards the bottom and put on some pressure themselves. But it's so hard now with two lanes pushing against you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're in a situation like this and you have three keeps versus one. It's going to be a great one. Now, if you've been losing every fight and you get this rare opportunity to end the game, then maybe you take it. Maybe they take that risk. But Dignitas did not need to take that risk. They have won every fight so far. And I actually think they have done the right thing by playing it safe. Even though I think maybe yeah. they could have ended it, but they didn't need to try. Uh, I mean, they're definitely in a... They're, they're, <laughs> they're in two games down. Two games down here in this series. They can't risk anything here. They have to play it safe. They have to play it steady. That shrine up towards the top is now their win condition. If they can win this shrine up towards the top, they can round out this game. The top keep being down, but you have the middle keep. You can still pull that Punisher to the mid keep, but there is nothing right. that defends Ballistics against that Punisher. It will go for the heroes. It will go for the core. Wait, now there's one. Ballistics, oh. where are you going? Ballistics, okay. Okay, but they've shown themselves. They need the XP. They want to kind of put that seed of doubt here in the minds of Team Dignitas. Yeah, yeah. That question, are they mad enough? to attempt a counter-attack here on the bottom keep, maybe it, even the core. It looks like it. Brightwing can reinforce this position very, very quick, mind you. She's currently soaking experience up towards the top. They've left Sonya up there to try and do uh, as much as possible on that shrine, which is very important. No Bolesk going that low makes it very hard here for Ballistics to go too far forwards. It's now a five versus four, but defensive position for Team Dignitas. The keep is still at 70% life. They're starting to go for it. If this keep goes down, that's level uh. 20. It looks like Ballistics will just force a fight here. They get the keep, they get the level 20, and yeah. there we go. And th this is their best chance so far. Sonya came back just at the right time here. She needs to get back into that fight. Though. Twilight Dream goes down, hitting three of them. They're going to have to retreat out for a moment. Twice as well as SESC. Very low. Ballistics, they're on retreat. They're trying to throw down the wall as quickly as possible to get out of this position. As Sonya goes in for the kill. SESC! SESC! Will he go down? He's barely escaping. Metamorphosis will be used aggressively not to get away. Sonar is still back there, Swoy is still here, Ballistics is going for it, Meridian goes down, Brightwing goes down, oh. Dignitas, I think they've done it! And it looks like it here, Illidan is trying to escape desperately, but three down here, Dignitas will keep their hopes alive here as Yonghua escapes out and tries his very best, but Dignitas is bringing the fight <laughs> to South Korea. <laughs> We could not have seen a more fitting ending to that game. Lily, she has beaten Illidan in the draft. She has functioned like yes. a counter to Illidan. And then with that final mano a mano, it's a full team wide. The Dick with us. of Black Temple defeated by a small panda as we now go to a game four. Dignitas takes game three, win style here, killing off the call. GG! What a fantastic play and way for Dignitas to get back into the game here. 1-2. This has been made into a true match. Great draft and great play.
Dignitas looks much, much stronger. And is this the key that they need now to unlock Ballistics? It's still a long road ahead of them here, but it gives them a bit of hope going up against this team. When you look at Korea, you think of Illidan as a power pick in a lot of ways. They value that hero very, very much. But Dignitas had the answer. Dignitas won fight after fight, and they really controlled that game. This is the moment where they can turn the match around. Lily, baby. There we go, the panda making it happen. Is that a 100% win rate in the tournament now? I think so. It's <laughs> strongest heroes confirmed, right? Congrats, Lily. Congrats. And you know what's even crazier than the fact that Team Dignitas beats Ballistics here. It's the fact that when Ballistics was losing, they didn't have that same uh, bulldozer style there where they don't make any mistakes. They did make mistakes, I think, where they tried to take fights that they couldn't possibly win. Now, you could argue that they couldn't win in general because there's Lily on the other side. <laughs> but just like running in without Metamorphosis and Avatar, they look strangely mortal here. Ballistics. Well, Kaldor, we had a lot of big plays in yeah. that game. Let's walk through them. And we have two replays, and we're going to look at one of them immediately. So this is actually the beginning of the fight. You can see that right here in the middle. You're already having Illidan. So we're starting with this like halfway through. It was one of the fights in level 16 when we actually saw them both trying to go for it. And especially Illidan was always poking a little bit. But rolling in forward slowly, you can see that he is forced to immediately jump out there. Everything starts to hit him. Here's Shongwa starting to go in, metamorphosis. And this is the real problem that they had. They never really could get anything done. The silence comes into play. And once again, Brightwing blowing up in the back. Illidan under pressure. He falls. They're going for Noblesse. And this is basically the story of nearly every single team fight that we have seen in this game so far. They just couldn't do anything. They couldn't put the pressure in that Illidan thrives on. Um, I, I just want to say, like as a side note to all of this, what a time to be a Heroes of the Storm fan. Yeah. Because the competition that we are seeing here at BlizzCon has never been better. Between Europe and Korea doing as well as they have here, it's, oh, it's a treat to watch. I couldn't agree more. Like, it's an absolute pleasure. And this is exactly what we were hoping for coming into the tournament, that we would see the Koreans, like that we would see teams that can beat the Koreans. Yeah. And we have definitely seen that. And then it's like watching Heroes of the Storm over the last two years, you see plays, you see great games, you see mistakes, but I've always thought like, I don't think that's it yet, until I saw Team Ballistics playing. Finally I thought, and that's just a week ago, this is how Heroes of the Storm is meant to be played. And yes, it's going to evolve over the years, but Ballistics is just insane. And to see them actually lose here against Dignitas, even if it's just one map, it's just incredible. Well, I'd like to see another one of those plays where they did happen to lose a fight. Calder, let's take a look. I mean, at this point, I'm just saying, let's enjoy that last fight here once again as we are rolling it forward slowly. This is when they took the keep at the bot lane, and this is really the end of the match. You can already see that once more, we have just everybody on the run. The Korean Dream is desperately trying to get away here. Illidan with the Metamorphosis, actually really well done here. Gets a huge HP boost once again. Nopales actually caught with that spear here. And they are just like taking them apart one hero after another, especially Swarm in the back line here, Nacho Jin. They just can't do anything at this point. One after another, they die. It's a triple kill. They even chase Illidan after that, and they get eventually the kill on him too. And this was really the moment when the game was decided. The Koreans were under so much pressure. Ballistics, Scrubby, you talked about it. They just said, like, let's go for that keep at the bot lane, make something happen, put the fear into them. That seed of fear, how you said it. And yeah, they couldn't get out of the situation anymore, but it was the only shot they had. It's a good choice, right? You kill the keep, get 20, 20 yeah. versus 20, and that's an even team fight. So that's almost a 50 50 at winning the game after you're losing the yeah. entire game. That's impressive by Ballistics. And yet, it was not really even because of apparently Dignitas having outdrafted and outplayed them in the team fights. And we get to watch Alili seal the deal on an Illidan all by herself. So that was <laughs> something to remember here. BlizzCon has the craziest things happen. Now, Dignitas, they brought game number three in their favor. They're staying alive in this tournament, but it's still match point on the side of Ballistics. We're going to Tomb of the Spider Queen, James. A European special. We saw Fnatic do oh so well on it before. It's where Europe has thrived. It's where Dignitas does have some comfort, definitely on this map. And it's not the best map really for Ballistics. So we could definitely see a 2-2 here. Okay, so this is Dignitas' team choice. And we're all very excited that Dignitas made this into a, a longer yeah. series. But let's not kid ourselves. Ballistics is still ahead 2-1. And they may still have secret weapons up their sleeve. 
All right, guys, we're going to go to a quick commercial break before game number four, but stay tuned to see if Dignitas can keep reigning over ballistics. The Heroes of the Storm Fall Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. things you're ever going to see in your life. We cannot wait to share with you guys what we have in store. Welcome to BlizzCon, boys. For Azeroth! We're exploring a lot of new locations. We invented some brand new characters. The world could always use more heroes. We retake our homework. When we first did BlizzCon back in 2005, we had no idea what to expect. Are we ready to begin the costume contest? It is amazing to feel part of this thing. How do you guys feel about today? Are you excited? It's so much more than a game in a box. We have so much to show you here today. It's just all fun and games. Have fun this weekend. Take care of each other. Have a great BlizzCon! The Heroes of the Storm Fall Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. Ballistics versus Team Dignitas, game number four's draft is here. Tomb of the Spider Queen, and we are deep into it. Yes, we are, and the monster that is Mane has once again <laughs> Gultan as his hero. Look how scared they were as well of that potentially being banned out in the second phase. Yeah. Picking it up this early shows that they really, really want to have Gul'dan as a linchpin. I was preparing my notes backstage, and Mene walks past me, reaches over, points at my notebook, and points at Gul'dan. Big smile on his face, and he <laughs> said, that hero is going to win us the tournament. Tomb of the Spider Queen is a perfect map for Gul'dan, and this is where Mene really excels on the hero. And I mean, just look at the priorities that we have here. Ballistics going into a double support immediately, and right now, this is actually this is actually something that you brought up, Robbie, once that we saw the draft. Tassadar, talk to me about it. I mean, Tassadar, I see him coming out, and I think Ballistics' chances have dropped a little bit here. Tassadar right now has been played quite a bit, more than 10 times in this tournament, but his win rate is under 20 25%. I think it's somewhere around 20 
That's the last I saw it. Tassadar seems to be one of the number one curses of teams here in this tournament so far. And they just lost a game with Tassadar. So yes. sticking yeah. to that with that low win rate, maybe he is a curse, but Leoric, the cursed dead king, I guess, is uh, going to be picked up here for Dignitas. As we know, the European special on a European special map, it's looking good for Dignitas right now. They know that they have a lot of sustained potential behind a Leoric, and he causes so much pressure, especially if they get to level 20 and he eventually gets Spectral Leech that uh, causes a lot of issues here for Ballistics. There's a lot of wave clear that we already have on both sides right now. It's also interesting to know that when we had such a massive focus on the CC tanks throughout the entire tournament, at this point, Ballistics on this map say we are not even even worried about EDC getting banned out against us. There are other alternatives that we're completely happy to go for, as for example, Johanna. But Dignitas now adding even to the wave clear, and they have the panic button with the Ancestral. They pay Gregor. I wonder if Ballistics is even going to pick up ETC. They have double support. ETC as a solo frontliner does poorly. Alarak is gone. It would have to be like ETC Thrall, maybe? Or ETC Kerrigan is possible? But it's not the most easy team to go up against when you look at Dignitas's roster. I'm wondering what Stitch is going to end up playing, actually. Tychus is gone, Falstad is gone. Where else would he go? Well, we, I'm really wondering what Ballistics is doing here. They need another frontliner for ETC generally. Double support ETC solo frontliner is kind of okay, but he becomes a pretty big target. And when you look at Leoric, Leoric is the best warrior killer warrior. Oh yeah, he's very good at that, and uh, we will see ETC had a little, little bit of a hard time. Greyman follows it up for Ballistics. All right, that, that kind of works out. I think I like that quite a bit, quite, because they need to... The, the one thing is that every single time when we see Mena on cooldown, it seems like the opponent is not able to put pressure on him. And if you can't do that, if you don't force him back into a defensive position, he is just going to completely wreck you. And Greyman, with a double support behind him, can put that pressure on. So how do you keep Greymane and ETC away from yourself? What does Snitch play? I think both point towards Falstad here. Right, Falstad has an 80%... Oh, of course, yeah. yes. It's yeah. The, this yeah. is what I was mulling over before. I'm like, yeah, what does yeah, Snitch yeah. now play? I mean, he can play Lunara, but it's... Ah, uh, well, there you go. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but with Lunara, you also have another hero. Like, this is really, this backline is vulnerable. There's like no doubt about that. So, uh, this is definitely a bit of a scary moment for Dignitas, I feel. If they can get the momentum going for themselves, then this draft has definitely the potential to completely snowball it. But Ballistics, they are apparently backing their hopes again onto that double support and focusing on a single hero, and that is in this case Greymane, whereas Vala is going to try to get some backup damage. I think it's pretty good drafts for both sides, but I think Dignitas actually has the better one. They're going up against Tassadar, who kind of slows down the pace of the game. He saves his allies. He doesn't do a lot of damage. Slow games, that's great for yeah. Leoric, great for Lunara. Both are late game powerhouses. Yeah, yeah I mean, just thinking of clear alone on this map, you look at Gul'dan and Lunara, and that is ferocious amounts of splash damage for the PvE versus all the lanes that are coming towards them. And you mentioned, Kolaris, this is really an EU special with Leoric. I mean, this feels like <laughs> it's Dignitas's game to lose. With Leoric, with with Lunara, Gul'dan for Mene, you got Bakery on his OG uh, Regar, aside from Karazim, of course. Uh, but this is this is very interesting. And JPL well. and Murdin. Yeah. It seems like Dignitas got everything that they wanted. And I have question marks at Ballistics's prioritization of heroes here. To pick Tassadar that early mm. really surprises me. And I wonder if maybe they were trying to like counterban the old European style that Fnatic and Dignitas showed with an early Tassadar with that Leoric uh, Lunara delay style. And think a little bit about what Bakery actually said in the interview and also in the video. He talked about Ballistics and he said like they are incredibly strong at drafting, but if they don't get the superior draft, they are vulnerable. We've seen that on the last map. This was yeah. the first map where we really saw Dignitas out draft their opponent. And right now they have a draft that they're extremely happy with once again. It's the best way for them to even this up 2-2. Two -two. And if they push it onto a game five, anything goes from that yeah. point. I have no clue how it would go. I mean, I think what we've seen today is the fact that there is no one that's safe in this tournament. <laughs> Fnatic upsetting already with MV Black earlier today, and now Dignitas. Can they do it? We all said we think they can, but I guess it's time to find out very soon. With Tomb of the Spider Queen on the horizon, when it comes to early game, who has the better control? I think Dignitas has a better solo laner. Mm -hmm. I think they have 
better... Oh, they don't have the better rotation. I think they have a better solo laner, a little bit weaker 4v4, but they have more damage, and Ballistics is just... They kind of have this defensive comp, but then with ETC, he has to be very aggressive. I don't know, I think Dignitas has most advantages. All right, guys. Well, it is time for game number four on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Make some noise if you want Ballistics versus Team Dignitas to go is all out. Thank you very much, Jake, as we now get into game number four here at Krubi. And to the left-hand side, we have, of course, Zhonghua going to be playing Tassadar, Nacho Jin on Grey Nobles on ETC, SCSC on Valor, and Swoy on Ariel. Give it up for Ballistics! And to the right hand side, it is, of course, Athero playing Leoric, Bakery on, on Regar. We have JPL on Meridian, Mene on Gul'dan, Snitch on Lunara. Give it up for Team Dignitas! Loud. <laughs> A very loud and big crowd. It's all seating is gone here. People are standing around and crowding around this semi-finals here that will determine whether a second European team will be propelled into the grand finals or whether it will be a Europe versus Korea finals in Ballistics Fnatic. Let's see what's gonna happen. Greyman jumping in there. Nacho Jin on Leoric as their angel goes down. Very, very quick response there. Ballistics not messing around. They are all business. Normally they're all business every single map. In game number three, they let that slip, and now here on Tomb of the Spider Queen, they're going to try and assert their dominance as quickly as possible. You mentioned it, but to begin with, they have a strong potential in the rotation. Yeah, their rotation is stronger, and it was a five versus five. They jumped in very daringly, and they were able to outshield any damage that Dignitas was doing. Now, Leoric, he comes back fast. His trade is where he becomes ghost form when he dies, and he can go around, get lifesteal, and actually come back faster than other heroes at the place where he died or where he traveled. So Leoric is a very sticky character with 100% uptime on playing around. And for now, Ballistics here are going to have to be careful about how they're going to approach this as a whole. They know that the Europeans are indeed good on this map. And Mene just waiting in the middle, just chilling out, slowly going to clean this up, get a few more props there for that Echo Corruption. Yeah, but once uh, Mene hits uh, 40 enemy heroes with this Corruption, which is Gul'dan's primary damage spell, uh, really the big one, he will get six Corruption fields forwards and then backwards, and it really provides powerful zoning and really good damage. And that's what Mene is stacking up here. He's, he's already 30% of the way there. Nice aim. Not too bad. Uh, Steam Tassi just gonna. Whoa, at the row. Be careful, my friend. Uh, Nacho Jin doing very well against him in a solo lane there. So, not too bad from the Grey Main. Going for cocktail build to start things off. Yeah, I mean, we see a lot of cocktail builds in this tournament here in Fall Regionals, but generally not perfect aim at level one. Mm. That is going to be bonus mana and bonus range for Grey Main's cocktail. The gank, the Stormbolt oh. hits, the corruption! And Greyman goes down. Dignitas responding in turn to the original kill there on Leoric, but this one is pretty valuable uh, in terms of Greyman actually being able to get back onto the field. Attempt at a turn in here from Dignitas. Nobles gets caught there as a moment and has drained hope from Athero. Tells him no. And did you see that Dignitas? They, they, they were trying to also stop Nobles ETC to go to the bottom, and it would be a great move, but I feel like they probably checked his talent. His level 4 talent is Crowd Surfer. It allows ETC to use his power slide through walls, through force wall, through structures, through everything. And that is a great escape. And it's a necessary pick against Liore. Yeah. And Tomb on solo frontliner ETC would just be able to blow him up, but he can just Crowd Surfer right out of it. Let's be careful here. CSC once again, a little bit of damage towards the middle there as Gul'dan has free reign over that position with JPL buffering at the front here. Dignitas not doing too badly for themselves. Athero caught in no man's land there, but he does have hardened bone, so he's okay. He can Wraith walk away. Yeah, anytime his Wraith walking takes Ooh. less damage from people who are attacking his original body. Very nearly Nacho Chin going down. Oh, he. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Thank you, Sly. Snitch, Snitch activated his poison from yeah. afar, adding bonus ticks of poison, and he would have died if not for Ariel's timely rescue. Nice job, Swoy. Very much so. Nobles trying to flank on around here. Jay's like, I'm not bothered, I don't care. But that is a turn in going to Dignitas quickly here. And now they're going to try and exert some pressure. If they can get all the towers across the board, that's a big win. The Spider Queen Deity is sending Web Weavers down all three lanes. They're going to be flying to wherever the minion waves are meeting and gonna bolster the attack here. 
for Team Dignitas. Here they come. You can see it on the mini map. That blob is going to summon a web weaver, which will summon spiders, which basically amounts to a lot of spiders. That's all, yeah, a lot of spiders. You don't call it Tomb of the Spider Queen for nothing, my friend. Uh, as Ballistics here, just going to kind of try and deal with it. <laughs> Xianghua got hit by the wave there, unfortunately for him. Nacho Jin is very whoa. deep in here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is there Angel winning that one versus yeah. one there? Having that lifesteal, Greyman, of course, without any natural self-sustain or self-healing. And Ethereo Angel is starting to win that, la that lane. And that's important. That means that Dignitas does not need to worry about bolstering that bottom lane. They can do their four-man pushes here. And nice they're getting one. some pretty good Ooh. damage in. Lunara was under aggression towards the middle there, and Natural Jin is trying to oh. get on with this fight. Uh, either oh. way, he manages to get away. Knowing you'll always have that dive pack potential. <laughs> Be careful, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> that would have actually killed him. Yeah, it would have. And Harden Bones will be able to get him out, as well as Lingering Apparition. 80% longer duration of that Wraith Walk, which makes him unstoppable. He takes less damage during it. And what a great choice in that solo lane there at the bottom, Ethereal Angel. Love it. Preserving the idea of self-preservation uh, over the idea of what we used to see in the European scene, which was the, uh, you know, just kind of skeletal reach uh, or paralyzing rage, the bonus lockdown, the bonus slow. Yeah, going for that uh, preservation. Yeah, very good, very good. And SCSC here trying to control the middle while uh, we see Ballistics moving down towards the bottom. After all, in a bit of a predicament, will Raid walk away? Swoy He's turning around. Swoy. He's going for Swoy. Swoy. Very close, there's a little death there, but helped out by Tassadar as well. Naturogen now being drained of life, and the Snitch gonna have to run on away there for the moment. Back and forth here by Ballistics and Dignitas. Typical Tassadar fight as well, can't kill anyone, but no one on this team dying as well. Mm -hmm. Great job by both teams here. Wow. As Lunara nearly took a fatal shot from Ballistics. Uh, the Vala there, but uh, he missed his hungering arrow, SCSC in uncharacteristic. Whoop. Little mistake. Such an important backbone player there for Ballistics. Fights everywhere going on at the moment here. JPL now getting healed up and good to go. Oh, the turn in. The turn in. Should and it's it. Web Weaver's Ballistics. Yep. Oh no, two, two more. Ah, oh, there we go. Two more, and that should be it. There we go. SCSC finally getting that, knowing that they can't really apply too much pressure down there. And also, the requires they another kind of close to 10 here are Team Dignitas. Now, what's interesting is, is that once 10 hits here very soon, uh, uh, Dignitas, Korea, uh, to, or Ballistics doesn't want to overextend too much with these Web Weavers. Yeah. Heroics could turn around, even the Web Weaver push. Yeah, it takes at least 20, 30 more seconds or so for Ballistics to reach level 10, and Dignitas yeah. has it in two. Yep. It, I mean, Ballistics is not allowed to push anywhere where Dignitas is defending. So Dignitas will try to make short work of the middle one, and then they need to choose. Do they go top? Do they go bottom? They have the level lead. But you can't just take a fight and let the Web Weavers push. They do too yeah. much damage by themselves. Now, Leoric is defending the bottom. So we see a four-man collapse by Dignitas going to the top. It's four versus four. Dignitas could be fairly aggressive. But there we go with that level 10 for Ballistics. And they are OK. As we see, ETC still waiting a moment on his heroic choice here at level 10. So they still have to be careful. You never know when a stage dive or something like that can come in the back here against just three members alone for Team Dignitas. And they will back Ooh. away. Wow. And that was, uh, yeah, ambitious, but oh. big green. Oh, very close to death. Oh, the turnaround, JPL on Grey Main. Snitch getting some bad shots in on Natrogen. Very oh. nice corruption. The fell flame by Mena there as well. Nobody has died yet. Keep in mind, ancestral healing was used. Natrogen pressured Mena there in that middle rotation. And now Dignitas in hot pursuit. Oh. Should they, though? I don't know. Although that being oh. said, Mena was doing a lot of damage. There's the launch pit coming out from Noble Earth. Two locked in at the moment. Jay's trying to get the disruptor, but that's a kill on towards Lunar as well as Leoric. That is a brilliant pickup for Ballistics. Dignitas had no ancestral healing. They missed their entomb. They needed to get the heck out of dodge. Yeah, yeah. They overextended, they overchased. And just because an opponent is running doesn't mean they're afraid. They Dignitas you. overextended and now lost their lead. Let's take a look at that again to summarize. As you can see, the mosh pit catching two. And during all of that, so much damage coming out from SCSC as well, was able to just clinch those very easily. Jay was trying to disrupt in the back, but it was ineffective. Yeah, you know what actually happened there? Bakery also used the cleanse on Lunara. She took about two hippity skippity jumps away and was <laughs> still in the mosh pit. Right. It's actually mini pulses of stun rather than one really long one. So a cleanse isn't always enough to get out of it. And now Ballistics pushing on some pressure here. Now, uh, very much so, putting on a lot 
against Dignitas. They're trying to hold on against this with this four. They've spread themselves out across the lanes because they know that with this Web Weaver turn in, Ballistics will be approaching 13 quite quickly. Dignitas has to respond. Not too bad job by Dignitas. They defended all Web Weavers already. They lost their middle four. The bottom is fairly healthy. The top is almost dead, but not dead yet. Dignitas has a fairly okay chance to fight here. Now, is there an angel? Where, <laughs> Where do we go? He's trying to buy time at this point. He knows he's dead, so <laughs> he will fall to the bottom. Welcome to your tomb <laughs> and mine. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, uh, wait, I see Dignitas at the boss. They're not... Uh, they're not that's why he was trying to buy time. Uh, that's why he was trying to buy time. But That's ambitious. So Kolaris. Um, <laughs> Everyone's alive. Panic. Uh, panic stations. Okay, here comes Nobles. He's actually taking quite a bit of damage, but I'm not sure this is going to work out for Dignitas. I think they are all going to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, too. Um, oh, there's a... It was pretty brave. They're going to try and get the boss. They're going to try and still challenge it here. Horrifying! Oh, they get the boss somehow, some way! They may still all die here. A great move by Mene, but they need to get out very quickly. Gul'dan goes down. That's as best a situation as they could have got out of that. Yeah, I mean, Bakery had the plethora of gems here. Uh, they can go try and pay at the bottom. Uh, I expect Ballistics to try and zone them out. Look at that. Noble S with ETC going to the bottom one. He knows the risk is there, so... Okay, we see some gems lost and two members died, yes. They got the boss, which almost got the fort, not quite. All, almost about equal? It was an interesting exchange, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, let's and, just say it was interesting. Yeah, uh, Ballistic's now going to put on some pressure towards the top fort here and do quite a bit of damage themselves at the moment. But unfortunately for Team Dignitas, they don't have level 13. I think that's why they took these kind of moves. They understood you have to be opportunistic when you are dealt that kind of hand with Athero getting caught out like that. By time, you're not 13, try and go for a big power play. Yeah, doing what's least expected, and at the very least, and we'll never see that separate timeline, yeah. that separate dimension. At the very least, Ballistics cannot take the boss, which very well they might have turned their eyes to very soon after. Yeah, so and it did quite a bit of damage to that top four. Now 13 is in play here for Team Dignitas. Ballistics, though, has a great structural position here when it comes to their fort still surviving. And Team Dignitas has enough gems to try and turn in. They're going to try, but it is difficult against the control we're seeing here from Ballistics. Uh, lockdown there on JPL. Nice cleanse by Bakery. JPL, JPL going forward on ETC. ETC dropping to Half-Life. Noble S has been pushed back for now. I really like the wall from Tassadar. If many have got a little bit closer. Oh, oh that's going to be a five. Five. The oh, oh, three man and two. Noble S is very low towards bottom. Our rails him will heal him. JPL's going to have the ancestral healing on towards him as well. And that is going to be the Wraith Ward from Lyra trying to get out of that sticky situation towards the mid. He's very low. Not sure how well JPL's going to hold out any work. Many doing a lot of damage towards Zhonghua. And at the same time here, oh, JPL just don't him out. Marshman is still available. Uh -oh. Noble S goes in and he gets the Marshman. There is no cleanse. Oh. is being left behind enemy lines here as two members of Dignitas goes down ballistics Perfect they get the triple kill blow up potential on their side even though having a Tassadar in this the sustain is good to turn it around and find those opportunities here ballistics now looking to bring down this wall here and Dignitas has a mountain to climb yeah Dignitas going here oh, oh the ranger goes down as well ballistics on the warpath Great job by them, and they have exactly enough gems, Kolaris, to get the turn in here. Yes, they do. Playing this out perfectly at the moment here against Team Dignitas. And that will mean now keeps are under threat. And if Dignitas loses keeps here, then that could mean very, very bad news. Here come the Web Weavers. This could very well be the beginning of the end here for Dignitas. A 10 versus 1 takedowns. Ballistics' draft was... Oh, it's working out. I didn't completely understand it, but I'm seeing how they're grinding out here. And with their great rotations, Greymane there, an absolute terror. Now picked up Executioner. We've got the talent lead and the Web Weavers pushing in full structure still on Ballistics' side. And they're looking to end this game here, potentially. The one slight saving grace for Team Dignitas is that these Web Weavers descended a little further away from their fort. Uh, keeps, I should say so. Now, they have a small window of time to try and buy some. They can clear the bottom, try and rotate and defend this location as well. Team Ballistics do have their level 16 talents, though. Okay, Dignitas try, trying to mount to defense here. This keep 
is very likely going to die. Dignitas should not risk any deaths here because that could mean the end of the game. They defended the bottom, they can defend the top. They shouldn't overextend. Keep us down, Catapults are gonna start pushing in there in the middle lane for Ballistics. And they're now rotating to the top. And Ballistics trying to find some damage anywhere. Ariel keeping them very healthy there. Swoy does his job. Even more towers falling. Big chunks of experience going over to Ballistics, really asserting their dominance. They're going for the keep. They, I mean, it's good they're they very it. far ahead. They get the force wall, the tame and strike attempt there. JPL jumps out and Dignitas has to make a stand here. Like a cornered badger, they have to lash out and try and get some takedowns here. Yes, they do. It's going to be difficult though. They still don't have their level 16s. They know they're under so much pressure here as Ballistics have really put themselves in such a good spot. And Noble S taking some damage. That's going to be the keep falling with no deaths on the side of Ballistics. Dignitas is really up against it. Yeah, I mean, the moment that Dignitas decided to send the Terra Angel to the middle lane to get experience, they forfeited that keep. That was, uh, that was already going to happen. So they decided not to fight. Now, it's very untraditional to fight 15 versus 17. You don't have the talent, you have a lot less damage and HP than your opponent. Those levels really matter. But that might have been the place where they should have taken a stand. Now, instead, they're going to go for level 16. And after that, they're going to run out of time. You can see the uh, Ballistics swinging into their comfort zone now. You can see them just making the moves very, very decisively. We're getting middle keep. We're going top. We're getting top keep. We're going to stay there until we get it. We've got that. We're swinging down. We're stealing your bruises. Everything about it looks crisp here. Yeah, exactly. This is the Ballistics that we saw in the entire rest of the tournament. Possibly game three was an aberration. Something out of the ordinary here as Ballistics uncharacteristically dropped the map, but they look like they are in the solid lead here, Kolaris. Uh, I mean, Team Dignitas at this point can't even really do a boss bait or anything like that. They need this kill. They really need to get this off Noblesse, but Crowd Surf power slides across just that little structure. And we'll save Noblesse. Well, it's going to be the Wraith Walk to get out of that wall. And Dignitas cannot take this just yet. Nacho Chin on the warpath, on the prowl, coming there from the right Noblesse. side. He's going to get entombed, but he uses his jump there to get out of the entomb. JPL deep in enemy lines. SESC taking down the Terra Angel. The march pit on Bakery. And that's 61 gems. Oh. Bakery goes down. That's perfect here for Ballistics here. They almost lost the Nacho and Noblesse, but it's not going to happen as Dignitas now falls apart. Three men go down. on to the court as well. Perfect play here by Ballistics. They're the champions of Super League and they are going to win this semi-final and march on to try and get themselves a second championship. With that flawless play, with that quad quill, they end the court. GG 3-1. A blip in the matrix potentially there on Infernal Shrines and Ballistics in game number four on Tomb of the Spider Queen on Europe's home turf in that battleground are able to seal the deal and they move on. SCSC and Noblesse must be so happy to move on to the final and get the retribution from last year's BlizzCon that they won. They've got to feel it here, though, with that victory dominant over Dignitas. I mean, yes, Dig did take the one game. But overall, it was really Ballistics in that driver's seat. Well played from the number one seed of Korea. Ballistics played an absolutely fantastic series. And I mean, you just can't take it away from them. Of course, Dignitas with the fantastic game that they had on Infernal Shrines. But overall, the Koreans just stepping up so much, playing a completely different level. This was just absolutely amazing to witness this. Team Dignitas narrowly misses out on the repeat performance of last year. They got second place in BlizzCon. They will not get top two this time, but they played a great game. And I just want to give huge respect there for taking a map off of Ballistics and making such a good series. GG uh, Dignitas. They knew they were going up, going up against uh, with the best team in the world, basically, in their eyes. They knew that the style that Ballistics brings out is extremely hard to deal with. As you say, they took that map, but Ballistics absolutely showed, in especially three of those four games, why they were Super League champions. Yeah.
Well, let's see some of those Super League champion plays, Kaldor. I mean, I have two replays for us, and this is like the... Oh, actually, this is one of the moments where the game is already about to end. I mean, this was really one of those power slides and also the mosh pit that turned it all around. And all of this, by the way, happened on the back of an engagement where Dignitas was trying to take the opponent out. So there's the three kills, and this is really where it snowballs out of control completely. This is the three-level lead that comes in, the extra talent. And at that point, as Krabby said, like four after four falls, they get their turn in, and they're just able to again push with the objective through. I think there was a lot of big fights in that game. Let's take a look at another one here. Exactly, because we had like one more, I think, uh, and I'm not quite sure if we actually have that, but I prepared a second one. I think I'm not quite sure if we still have that saved up, but I wanted to uh, highlight that boss once more. Like that was mm. actually like, uh, again, perfect showcasing of how much pressure Guldan can really execute there. And this is exactly the moment. So at first, it really looks like pretty good. I mean, this is actually like where Snitch starts falling. And then we pause it here for just a second. So this is Lunara dying. And this is also what Grubby was talking about, that Dignitas is a little bit crazy to go for that boss in the first place. Everybody was up on the opponent's team. They're starting to push this in. As you can see, Leoric is in the middle. But down here, this is where Mena all of a sudden comes in. And that makes all the difference as the boss is about to fall. JPL is already up there on the point. And we just played forward. There we see now all of a sudden that Horrify come in any second. <laughs> and like, it couldn't be any bit more perfect. Mm. This was really the moment where they get the boss. They lose too much getting the boss, but it was still one of the funniest moments in the entire game, in my G opinion. Got the boss. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's Gul'dan's power. And I think we did see Gul'dan's power in Lunara, but it just wasn't enough to beat Ballistics. That Entomb in the bottom lane when Athera was trying to stall out when he ran all the way down with his, uh, his wave, do you think that was a little bit too orchestrated showing? Like, look, I'm trying to stall, I'm trying to stall, because it seemed like the moment that that was cast, the team all realized and started rotating top. That's I, a big problem, which is, you know, whatever you're doing, if you're not seeing your opponents anywhere yeah. on the map, any any lane, there has to be something going on. They, they know this game. All of the teams have done an incredible job just, like, checking the bosses, yeah. checking just all of the key points on the maps. In a few of the cases, you could see, for example, JPL, when they didn't exactly know where the opponent was, they just walked up and had a quick peek or send the Wisp of Lunara over because they knew fully well that... They, I mean, Ballistics is cheeky enough to try that if they think they have enough time to do it. Yeah. So both of the teams really being on point for that. Well, congratulations to Ballistic advancing to the grand finals to face Fnatic. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, but when we return, it's going to be the grand finals.